A long time ago, a friend told our heroine that this life belonged only to her, she advised her not to the influence of her mother and to keep living her own life. These words resurfaced in her memory, and the girl didn't understand why, however, it was unusually cold, she curled up and shivered all over as the cold enveloped her from head to toe, the blonde touched the ground with her hand it was very cold and hard, seeming to be made of stone, the girl remembered that if you sleep on a cold floor, you can get sick, she still didn't know how she ended up in such inhumane conditions. Leah stood up and shook her head slightly, suddenly, she felt unbearable pain, her whole body ached, she grabbed her shoulder with her hand, and her pupils widened in surprise, the girl slowly looked around, trying to figure out where she was, the room seemed suspiciously empty and looked like a basement, inside, there was only an iron door and dim lighting. Leah stood up carefully and approached it cautiously, the girl tried to open it, but it was in vain, she realized she was locked in, there was something pleading in her gaze, and her eyebrows furrowed slightly in a mild panic, she began to pull on the handle again, but still, the doors didn't budge, now her hands were trembling, not from the cold, but from emotion, Leah started to guess that she had been kidnapped, the girl tried to understand who did this and for what purpose, her limited financial resources couldn't be considered the reason for it. Bad thoughts began to creep into her mind, organ trafficking, human trafficking, or even a serial maniac, an even bigger problem was that the heroine didn't remember anything, in her last memories, she was sitting in a cafe tilde copyright with her friend, Leah had spoken about her upcoming internship in another country, everyone was going abroad to study, but she couldn't afford it, her friend was clearly not happy with this news, showing disapproval with her whole demeanor, she asked how long the girl would be gone, Leah replied that she planned to leave for a year, and if all went well, she might stay longer, the friend frowned. The other person must have taken a long time to gather the strength to tell all of this, the blonde girl slowly took a sip of water and said that she didn't want anyone to find out about it, her interlocutor murmured that she was simply running away, Leah decided to remind her friend of her own words, you need to be free and live your own life. That's why the girl decided to take this step she wanted to learn something new and test herself. The heroine didn't want to hear any of this from her friend, she had become pregnant before finishing school and decided to drop out to get married, in response, she angrily retorted that it was her choice, she realized that the girl was still angry with her over this incident, like mine, Leah murmured, frowning. The heroine confidently stood up from the table and handed a letter to her interlocutor saying that she couldn't be there for the birth of the child, so Leah decided to congratulate her in advance. The girl warned that she no longer used social media, so she would get in touch only after her return, she also noted that it wasn't necessary to accompany her to the airport, now Leah deeply regretted the words she had said before, she didn't even have the chance to apologize to her friend, the girl held her head in her hands, blaming herself. Suddenly, recent memories began to return to her, she remembered that she was in a hurry because she was late for her flight, then she arrived at the airport in France, where there was a lot of hustle and noise, somewhere, raised voices and people shouting could be heard it seemed that a dispute was in full swing, the girl's stomach suddenly started to growl, and she immediately grabbed it with both hands, Leo assumed she had eaten something bad on the plane. She left her coffee cup on the seat and headed to the bathroom, many people said that in Europe, it's difficult to get there, that's all the girl remembered the rest was blurry, then she realized that all her belongings had disappeared her phone, passport, bag, and luggage were all gone. Leah approached the door, hopeful, she had already raised her hand to knock, but suddenly she heard unfamiliar voices, someone's footsteps were approaching the room, the girl was at a loss not knowing what to do, when an idea occurred to her, the stranger began to open the door, and it creaked as it opened, in the cold room, she saw a girl with long hair sleeping, Leah was terrified she couldn't even breathe normally, the sound of various footsteps approaching echoed, the girl's stomach began to hurt again, and she thought she was going to vomit, moreover, there were no toilets in this basement, behind the girl was an unknown person who showed no sign of consciousness, 
She was horrified when she realized it was the kidnapper. He then took a few confident steps and stopped right in front of Leah. She didn't understand what was happening, but at the same time, she was burning with curiosity. It was too dark to see anything. As she slightly opened her eyes, she saw black men's shoes. Leah still felt an unbearable pain in her stomach. If she vomited on this man's shoes, he would probably get furious. The girl thought she had definitely gone crazy because, in such a situation, her thoughts wandered to such insignificant things. Suddenly, the unknown figure spoke, calling the situation strange. The girl should have woken up by now. The blonde man said he had never been wrong with the dose before. He guessed that his victim weighed more than she appeared. Leah found this offensive. Then she realized exactly what the man had said, dose, he had probably put drugs in that coffee, that would explain why she didn't remember anything it was all because of the drugs, obviously, the villain had done this to kidnap her, Leah wondered why he needed to do this. The man said he would have to check himself, the girl tensed up, ordering herself not to move because any movement could only worsen the situation, the blonde man slowly sat down and carefully examined the hostage. Suddenly, her stomach growled loudly, the man smiled and told his companion that there had been a mistake they had grabbed the wrong person, he asked what their next steps would be they couldn't just let her go, as it could cause an international incident, the blonde man offered to kill the girl. She felt a cold sweat break out on her forehead, she didn't want to die, if it was the kidnapper's fault, then he should have let her go, all she saw were his shoes, the second man rejected the idea saying that killing her would be a waste of time, besides, Leah had a beautiful face, the girl sighed with relief at least one of them agreed, the man continued smiling and said it would be a good to have such talent in their arena, these words made Leah very tense, if they managed to please him, they would gain his favor and, at the same time, get rid of her. The blonde man clearly liked this idea, unexpectedly for Leah, this man approached her again, he gently grabbed her wrist, and she felt something sharp piercing her skin, the kidnapper injected her with something and whispered for her to sleep a little longer, when the girl woke up, she would find herself in a completely different world. The blonde man began to count slowly to three, Leah realized something she knew she was conscious, the sleeping pills took effect quickly, the girl instantly fell into a deep sleep, emitting a sound similar to snoring. Leah had a dream, the events took place at noon, she was returning home calmly after school, upon entering the house, she entered her pin code, and the doors opened easily, she was going to tell her mom she was home, but what she saw made her mouth freeze in shock, the heavy yellow suitcase fell to the floor with a thud, a completely naked man was standing in front of her, the stranger told her to come closer from that moment on, they would live together, what followed turned out to be a true nightmare. Finally, Leah woke up, sitting up and rubbing her eyes, while she slept, the girl wondered why she was now remembering this unpleasant incident. Having recovered completely, the heroine looked around, surprised, in addition to her, there were many girls in the huge room, all talking animatedly about something, the girl began to wonder who all these women were. Suddenly, the words of the kidnappers came back to her memory, Leah put her hands on her head stunned, she didn't want to believe what had happened, it turned out they were actually talking about a real arena. The situation was incomprehensible to the girl, in the 20th century, the idea of a real arena seemed archaic. Incompatible with modern realities, it was simply impossible, nervous, the girl began to fidget in her place, suddenly, she accidentally pushed the tall brunette she hadn't noticed before, the woman cursed in a language Leah didn't understand. It turned out that all these women had also been kidnapped, she felt that something was wrong, everything seemed real, but at the same time, it wasn't. The girl tried to calm down, anyway, denying reality wouldn't help us cap this place, it looked different from where she had been before, the walls were made of sandy bricks, and rectangular columns supported the high ceiling, the interior resembled Egyptian pyramids, in the far corner, there was a staircase leading to a door. Suddenly, the sharp sound of keys broke the silence, the doors opened, and three people dressed in unusual outfits entered the room, 
the woman with white hair in the middle looked terrifying to the heroine, Leah struggled to understand what was happening, she decided it was better to hide, so she slowly began to back away. The woman started to carefully examine each of the hostages, a blonde girl approached her with a confident look, loudly expressing her complaints and trying to find out something, the formidable woman didn't even listen to her words, in silence and without pity, she slapped her, then the woman suddenly grabbed the poor girl by the hair and easily threw her against the wall. The hostages were terrified, some of them began to whisper among themselves, the hostess issued a warning in an angry tone, anyone who tries to escape will be killed, she had no intention of keeping anyone, they said that no one had ever managed to escape from this place, anyone who tried was doomed to die the beetles would eat them alive in the dungeons of this castle, a deathly silence reigned in the room, Leah was terribly scared her skin crawled from her feet to her head, the hostess told the girls to remember only one thing, being chosen by him was a great happiness, however, the heroine didn't agree with this, appearance was the only thing Leah had inherited from her mother, one afternoon, her mother had told her she wanted to attend night school, the girl liked studying and wanted to go to university, her mother, a busty beauty, couldn't understand her daughter at all, with such a face and body, she didn't need a life like this, the woman believed Leah should have simply found a worthy man, this was a guarantee that her daughter's life would be successful and prosperous. Morning arrived and the rays of the sun gently entered the room through the arched window, bathing the space in a golden light, Leah continued lying in bed, sadly unwilling to get up, her loose hair was tangled, creating a mess, it had been a week since they brought her to this palace, she had tried to gather information about this place in every possible way. A maid entered the room, her name was Uru, she had her hair styled in a long, neat braid, smiling, she politely asked how the lady had slept, each captive was assigned a servant, Leah assumed they were carefully trained because it had been quite difficult to get information about this place and even about the current situation, the maid asked what Leah would like to wear today, she murmured sleepily that she didn't care. Leah continued wandering in her thoughts, she had managed to discover only a little, she was in the old city, which housed a palace and government buildings, this arena was significantly different from those described in history books, however, this was not surprising this culture had disappeared at the beginning of the 30th century, concerned, Eru said it wouldn't work the lady had to get dressed, Leah sighed, she didn't see anywhere the man who was supposedly the one who chose them, in fact, she didn't want to see him at all, after all, he was the one who kidnapped her and dragged her into this mess, this fact terribly irritated the girl, who knew, maybe he was an old, fat, and unpleasant man. Leah considered this an abomination, a shiver took over the girl anxious thoughts wouldn't give her peace, she couldn't just run away, if there was something worse than death, it was a dungeon full of bugs, the servant interrupted the flow of negative thoughts, asking the lady to accompany her, she needed to prepare a bath for the girl and give her a massage, Leah finally got out of bed and nodded in approval, apparently, it was much better than the mistakes, the girl promised herself she would never try to attract his attention it was as if she didn't exist. Aru began skillfully praising the lady, there were rumors of a woman who died innocent, this happened because she, she was never chosen, if Leah was lucky, this would be her fate, relaxing, the girl closed her eyes, the words of her psychologist came to mind. Leah had to accept reality as it was there was no point in wasting time on things she couldn't control. Suddenly, the door to the lady's room opened without knocking, another maid entered her name was Lana, concerned, Eru asked her colleague what had happened, Lana replied that the meeting would take place in exactly one hour, all the ladies insisted on changing clothes again, Leah didn't like this news, complaining. Lana said that it was always the same problems her mistress was already hysterical, after delivering the message, the maid hurriedly left the room. Leah slowly came out of the bathroom, her feet wet, she walked across the floor and approached Aru, the girl asked what was special about this meeting, the maid said that the mistress would appear for the first time, if Leah was lucky, she would be chosen, Leah was a bit confused by the word chosen, the lady thought for a moment 
there were many beautiful women in the Near East, so she doubted she had a chance. Leah wondered what would happen if she wasn't lucky. Uh rushed to comfort her, enthusiastically clasping her hands. She promised to do everything possible to highlight the lady. Leah, pleading, grabbed the maid by the shoulders. She begged through tears not to do this. This reaction surprised the woman. The girl began to make excuses, suggesting she could say she wasn't feeling well and decided to stay. The maid responded calmly that the chief eunuch would come in person to fetch the lady. Leah sighed deeply, feeling disappointed. Noon arrived, the sun was high above the horizon, the city was bathed in bright light and warm warmth, small clouds floated slowly in the sky, the Prime Minister was in Carrion's office, they were discussing a woman who had recently worked as a mercenary, the ruler knew she had escaped and decided to ask his subordinate if it meant she had left the country, the man in the white robe said he wasn't sure, but there was still a possibility that she was still here, Carrion, thoughtful touched his chin, not satisfied with the response because all he heard was uncertainty. The Prime Minister also had updates, he was informed that new girls had been brought to the arena, the man looked at his subordinate with disgust and said firmly that he had said many times that His Highness didn't care about this, the Prime Minister assured him that he remembered everything perfectly, the ruler expressed the opinion that these girls were disgusting, like parasites. Carrion tried to end the conversation rudely, but the man reminded him that the fugitive mercenary still needed a target to pursue. The ruler began to understand what was being hinted at, his blue eyes focused on a point, filled with reflection and deep attention. The Prime Minister continued trying to interest Carrion in the arena, pointing out that some of these girls were gifts from the nobility. Unlike the previous order, the women in the arena could walk freely around the courtyard, the ruler chuckled to himself and gave the order to examine all the girls, this important event was called the meeting by the men, Carrion looked sternly at his subordinate, insisting that they must personally examine the girls because there was a possibility that the enemy might be disguised among them. The man in white bowed slowly and assured Carrion that he was prepared to follow his orders, upon leaving his office, the Prime Minister sighed in relief. He was finally able to relax, when an incident occurred at the palace, the country was filled with anxiety and confusion, suddenly, the man began to sob, feeling that it made him look like a fool, once he calmed down, the Prime Minister pondered that a king wasn't determined by blood ties but by higher powers in the heavens. Leah decided to choose her own dress, and when the maid saw this, she was astonished. She asked if Leah had made a mistake by choosing that particular outfit for the meeting, the girl didn't understand why it caused confusion among the servants, Eru inquired where the lady had found this clothing and pointed out the excessive normality of the outfit, Leah asked what was wrong with appearing simple, at that moment, the maid carefully examined the girl's face and realized that Leah hadn't worn any makeup, this was exactly what Leah wanted, in her defense. Leah said that it was currently fashionable to look natural, if a man had normal eyesight, he would never choose a girl among these painted peacocks. An hour had passed, almost all the young women had already gathered in the main hall, it was decorated with elaborate curtains and sparkling chandeliers, everything turned out exactly as Leah had expected, the ladies were dressed in stunning gowns, and their faces seemed perfect as if created to perfection, the charming appearance of the women had its effect Leah couldn't take her eyes off them, the lady sighed in relief, glad that she probably wouldn't attract the ruler's attention now. Leah accidentally overheard a conversation among some of the ladies, there were rumors that this man was the regent of the king and, in fact, his eldest son, all powers had been transferred to him since the king was very ill. The lady heard very little of the crowd's noise, one of the girls continued, saying he was a cruel tyrant even ministers and officials trembled in fear, another lady claimed that during meetings, he could throw things and overturn tables, her friend described him as extremely cruel, and his name was Kian, which meant darkness, Leah thought this wasn't surprising, given that this man had a dungeon full of insects even his name sounded sinister. A voice from the hallway announced the arrival of Regent Kian, all the girls tensed, not knowing what to expect, Leah awkwardly stepped back just in case, 
The girl decided not to look in his direction but involuntarily lifted her gaze as Regent Kian entered the room. Leah couldn't examine him closely, but the man was taller than she had thought. He wasn't an old, fat man at all. Leah turned her gaze back to the women in front of her, who did their best to look attractive to be chosen. Appeared before her eyes he still ordered her to look for a worthy man and forget to study. However the girl I didn't want this, Regent Kian began to walk around the room, carefully examining each of the ladies, suddenly it seemed to La that he was turning his gaze towards her, the next moment the man turned round, and he walked away the Prime Minister and the hostess stood there fiercely observing what was happening the lady's face was covered in cold sweat, it was terrifying. She thought she saw a flashed blue for a moment the girl was incredibly bored not that she had anything to do once she returned to the room she was wishing it would all be over Leo was completely immersed in her own thoughts forgetting what was happening she incredibly missed her cell phone the girl wondered if the internet existed in this country, his thoughts were interrupted by a harsh male voice as he raised his head, had the lady noticed Regent Kian the terrifying trio was right in front of. She suddenly the girl screamed and jumped up the ruler remained standing in his place expressing. Leah quickly fell silent and covered her mouth with her hand, she still couldn't believe what she was seeing, a bright blush covered her cheeks as she spoke of inner excitement, the man asked the girl's name, Leah stood there, unable to say a word, everything seemed wrong, the ruler turned out to be incredibly attractive, he looked at the girl with an eagle's gaze, waiting for a response. She continued to stare at his various facial features in astonishment, the hostess turned to Leah with disgust and said that the regent had asked her name, she should have already answered his question. Suddenly, the man turned around and said it no longer mattered, he didn't understand how someone with such appearance had managed to reach that place, laughter and mockery were heard among the crowd, regent Kian quietly left the room. Exhaling, the lady thanked God for having avoided trouble, she was glad that the man had ignored her, but at the same time, it angered her greatly, after the meeting, the trio moved down a corridor with arched windows, the sun was still shining brightly outside, and the branches of the trees swayed gently in the wind, the Prime Minister spoke first, asking for the Regent's opinion, he didn't think the new girls seemed quite decent, he ignored the question and turned to the white-haired woman who was responsible for managing the arena, she nodded, and Kian demanded a complete explanation of her actions. The woman expressed her consent without any doubt, the regent mentioned the girl he was approaching, and the man instantly fell silent, saying it didn't matter, turning around, he walked away. After the meeting, Leah was in the room, boredom drove her to the point where she decided to start dusting. The maid entered the room and asked how the meeting with her suitor went, Leah replied that nothing special had happened, as soon as Leah mentioned Kian, the door was slammed open, the girls were astonished, not understanding what was happening, an angry hostess burst into the room, Eru asked what had brought her here, the woman looked at her with a fierce gaze, raised her hand, and struck the maid hard across the face, the fragile girl fell to her knees from the blow, the hostess, in a threatening tone, asked how she dared to joke in front of the regent, she also reminded her of the rules to follow. Blushing to her ears, the maid awkwardly sat on her knees and sincerely began to apologize, to her left, the woman heard a stammering voice with trembling lips, Leah tried to say that Uru was not at fault, the hostess took a deep breath and, in a more assured tone, said that the girl herself had chosen that outfit, she was the one who did it. Leah continued to defend her maid, stating that Uru had tried to stop her, but she insisted on her choice, so Uru finally gave up. The hostess responded that she was fully aware and understood the situation, times had changed, but there were strict laws to follow, no ordinary maid would forget this, Leah wanted to ask a question, but the woman interrupted her, calling her a stupid girl, she asked if she really didn't understand anything. The strict hostess warned that if the girl caused more problems in the future, Eru would be punished instead, this was said in a terrifying tone, after finishing the conversation, the woman turned silently and left the room, Leah stood there, confused, overwhelmed by a sense of injustice. She called the hostess an old witch, 
Regaining her composure, Leah ran to the maid, she began to apologize and say it was her fault, Aru quietly replied that it was all right, with horror, Leah looked at Aru's face swollen from the blow, the girl asked how she could say everything was fine, the hostess's hands seemed as big as weapons, the maid left and ran to get a wet towel, defeated. She didn't have to wait long, when Leah returned, she helped Aru move to the soft sofa, the girl knelt and carefully began to clean the maid's face, she remained still with her hands awkwardly clasped, saying that the lady shouldn't apologize, Aru realized she needed to give the girl an adequate explanation, however, she was unfamiliar with the local culture. The blonde girl asked what exactly she should have explained, lowering her gaze, the maid began to explain the situation, she explained that initially, the lady was supposed to receive training, but due to unsettling events in the palace, it was cancelled, Leah was surprised to learn about the training program, she assumed it was to learn how to survive an aharim, wanting a precise answer, the girl asked what the program was for, the maid continued confidently, saying it was a kind of set of rules that all women here were required to follow. It included history lessons, royal etiquette training, etc. They were also taught various ways to please the king. Leah found this last point terrifying and disgusting. Aru wanted to continue but Leah stopped her, asking not to go into details. The girl concluded that things couldn't get worse, she felt like she was going to vomit, but when she remembered what happened at the banquet, she had no chance. The lady felt pity for Aru, her strategy had succeeded. Unable to contain herself, the girl laughed, the maid simply looked at her, surprised. A silent knock was heard in the regent's quarters, it was the prime minister, Carrion responded that he had arrived just in time, the man casually threw a stack of carefully folded papers onto the table, saying he had reviewed them all, Carrion said that, with the exception of a few whose identities were known, everyone else was suspicious. The regent raised his hand and lightly drummed his fingers on the document, pointing to a specific woman among them, she seemed the most dubious, moreover, they only knew her name nothing more, they didn't know where she came from or which noble sent her as a gift. The prime minister looked closely at the attached photograph of the girl, he remembered this lady, the man brought the sheet close to his face and continued studying the image quietly. He noticed that this girl definitely stood out from the rest. The elder asked what Kiam would do if she turned out to be a spy, would he interrogate her and force her to reveal who was behind everything, or would she simply be expelled from the country? However, if the lady turned out to be the same mercenary, the man paused and said she would be executed. The regent added that this woman had killed his younger brother, so they couldn't let her go so easily. He then asked the Prime Minister if he agreed with him, the Prime Minister looked at him and nodded confidently, agreement and the mission could be read in his red eyes, the Elder said they shouldn't have acted solely on circumstantial evidence, after all, the situation would only worsen, it would be unpleasant if the prey was hiding. The ruler listened attentively to his subordinate, after thinking for a bit, he decided to meet with the suspects personally. The Prime Minister couldn't hide his surprise at such reaction, the Regent noted that there was nothing surprising about it. He decided to remind his subordinate of his own recent words, asserting that this was the harem of His Majesty Carrion. In reality, the ruler had every right to go out with these girls, this way, he could examine them all without raising suspicion. Finally, the Prime Minister understood everything, he bowed and declared that he would convey this message to the head of the harem. The man noticed that the regent Carrion continued working non-stop, he asked him to take a break, and he agreed, then the door closed with a soft creak, the ruler was left alone in the room, he began to look again at the image from Leah's documents. The prime minister walked slowly down the hallway, suddenly, a black silhouette appeared behind him, however, the elder did not even flinch. The mysterious man ordered him to stay away and not take his eyes off him. The man nodded obediently, there was peace and tranquility in Leah's room, she was so lost in her thoughts that she began to lose track of time, it was very hot, with the sun and cleanliness all around, however, the girl only had one problem, she had nothing to occupy herself with, she didn't like idleness at all, if she hadn't been kidnapped, 
she would have been busy working as an intern, bored out of her mind, the lady started scrubbing the floor with a rag, naturally, the girl had already farewell. Since she hadn't gone to work and was now far away, Leah couldn't understand what she had forgotten in this strange country, suddenly, the doors opened without knocking, a dazed drury burst into the room, breathing heavily, she turned to her mistress, then the maid saw what the girl was doing, her facial expression reflected a mix of surprise, alarm, and confusion, Leah awkwardly gasped and blushed, trying to explain that she was cleaning, Uru, puzzled, lowered herself to the same level as her mistress and asked if she was doing a bad job or if it was simply not appropriate for her. The maid began to deny everything, she argued that wasn't the case, Leah, indignant, declared that she was incredibly bored, there was no internet, and she had no choice but to stay in her room all day, this torture drove the girl mad, Eru looked at her mistress with understanding and thought she should have gone outside, the maid suddenly stood up and began kicking the girl out of the room, saying she needed to go for a walk, Leah resisted but it was in vain, a moment later, she found herself in shock in the hallway. Finally, Eru asked the girl not to do her job anymore, the lady wanted to invite her to sort things out, but the door slammed shut in her face, the breeze gently brushed Leah's long hair outside, the girl walked slowly down the corridor with arches leading to the street, despite her concerns, nothing happened, after the banquet, it seemed that the other ladies had already made friends, Leah snorted in disgust she didn't want to have tea with them. Lost in her thoughts, the girl didn't hear a man approaching from behind, the angry man asked who she was and how she had gotten here, this area was reserved only for members of the royal family, the lady didn't realize that the voice was actually speaking to her and it sounded very familiar, the man's hand touched the girl's shoulder, she turned towards him again and was told he had asked a question, scared, Leah instinctively pushed the stranger's hand away, she screamed and told him not to touch her. Regent Carrion didn't expect such a reaction at all, the surprise was so great that he lost his balance and stumbled towards the edge of the balcony, the man began to fall backward, stretching his arms to the sides in an attempt to grab something, but his efforts were in vain, after a moment, the girl realized her mistake, the ruler fell to the ground with a thud and let out a groan, alarmed birds quickly took off into the air, then the sounds of guards stomping were heard, two tall, armed men ran towards Leah, drawing their katanas and blocking her path, the girl tried to discern the guards' faces but didn't understand who these people were or where they came from. Suddenly, Leah realized there was something much more important than these questions, the lady looked back at the balcony from which the ruler had fallen, there was a dark-haired man with a katana on his belt, his name was Tariffs. He turned to Kian and asked if he was okay, the man lying among the bushes sighed deeply, barely saying he was still alive, the girl covered her mouth with her hand, embarrassed, this was a huge relief for her, she realized she had almost committed murder, Regent Kian remained motionless, lying in place, and expressed anger, saying he couldn't move at all. The afternoon was slowly approaching, the lights were already on in the ladies' bathroom, Leah sat still on the silk sofa in the room, the head of the harem stood in front of her, wanting to discuss several important matters without allowing the woman to say a word, Leah interrupted her, starting to say that Vairu had done nothing wrong it was all an accident, the girl concluded that the regent was to blame for everything, he was the one who suddenly appeared from behind and scared her. The hostess was surprised by the lady's reaction, as she hadn't even said anything, she also found it strange that the guards hadn't prevented Leah from entering the forbidden territory. The woman advised the girl to be more careful in the future, pointing out that this place was exclusive to the royal family, Leah had no right to visit it without permission. Suddenly, the woman anxiously grabbed the lady's hands, saying that from now on, she had nothing to worry about, the girl promised she wouldn't set foot in that territory again. The woman looked at her puzzled and left. Leah realized she had done something wrong, the hostess explained that she had come to her for another reason, she was going to personally tell the lady important news, the regent planned to speak with each girl separately, Leah stood there stunned, 
The woman said it was very important, so the lady should ensure she was well prepared. The idea of being alone with him tormented her, she assumed it would be some kind of interrogation, then Leah realized something, there was no way to avoid the meeting, this realization made her even more nervous, she didn't know what to expect from her. Conversation with the regent. Finally, the hostess gave a warning that she would keep her under surveillance, so the lady should have been more careful, then the door slammed shut, the girl stood there confused and not knowing what to do, desperately, she shouted Uru's name, hoping for help. The next day, the bright sunlight gave everything a special glow, Leah composed herself carefully and went out to the terrace, the girl leaned against the wall, looking at the other women, according to her maid, some of them had already spoken with Carrion, they were lounging on the sofas, discussing something among themselves, the lady looked at them with curiosity, wanting to know how it had all gone, disappointed, she thought it wasn't worth approaching them none of them seemed inclined to respond to her. Suddenly, the girl felt a strong push on her back, it was a dark haired woman whom the lady had noticed more than once, with disdain, the woman expressed her surprise, asking what Leah was doing there, the brunette added that Leah was hiding like a rat, the girl looked at her indignantly. It had been annoying from the first day when the lady woke up and accidentally pushed the woman, she immediately seemed quite severe. The brunette condescendingly noted that number 20 was Leah, when she first heard about the numbers, the girl was surprised. The woman continued sarcastically, saying she had heard that Regent Carrion was injured because of his lover, so instead of being there, she should have thought about herself and be grateful she wasn't sent to prison. The brunette asked if Leah was really so desperate for attention, she looked at her with a frown, leaving, and insultingly called the lady small, foolish, and pathetic, she claimed that even a million years wouldn't be enough to attract the regent's attention, these words surprised Leah, she wondered how this woman dared to speak like that, the lady hoped she wouldn't have to encounter the regent again. Night fell, and the stars shone brightly in the sky. All the girls had been in their rooms for a long time, and the maids could be with them if they wished. Leah turned to Aru with concern, asking her courteously what she wanted. The girl inquired about number 20, her hand moved clumsily. The maid asked where she had heard it. Leah replied that she was on the terrace, and one of the girls had called her number 20. The woman sighed deeply, hoping her mistress wouldn't find out about this. Uru began to explain that number 20 referred to the room number, this number indicates how close it is to Regent Carrion, the size and interior of the room also vary according to the order. Leah asked about the room, number 20, the maid hesitated to answer, she sadly said it was the last room, the coziest of all, the woman tried to calm the lady and asked her not to be upset, she said it really didn't matter now. Aru wanted to continue but Leah interrupted her, asking her to forget everything and end the conversation, the girl abruptly covered her head with a blanket and said she was going to bed, the maid was about to leave the room when the lady, dissatisfied, asked her to turn off the light, Aru quickly complied and left, a loud click was heard as the door closed, the room was plunged into darkness, with her face buried in the pillow, the girl smiled sarcastically. The maid said the room was the most mundane, but to Leah, it felt like a hotel, suddenly, the blonde laughed, sighing with pleasure. The girl still couldn't believe she was in the last place, this meant that the regent was not at all interested in her, she had never felt so happy to be in last place. The regent and the doctor were present in the room, the man turned to the patient, saying there were no serious injuries to his bones or body, the muscles were very tense so a bit of rest should be enough for recovery, Carrion listened to the doctor and told him he could leave, after bowing, the man left, a mysterious figure in a black cloak entered the room, the patient seemed to be expecting him, he said the woman had tried to kill him, the brunette replied that it all seemed like an accident. Resting his elbows on the bed, the regent let out a deep sigh, despite the pain, he got up and sat with his disheveled hair only showing his lips. The man said he had to handle this himself, looking at the boy with expectant A's, the ruler ordered him to immediately arrange a meeting with the girl for the next day. The next day, the girl sat at the table, 
enjoying the fresh morning and delicious breakfast. She also admired the unusual scenery while drinking coffee. It was hard to even imagine what could be better, Leah thought. On the other hand, the fact of the kidnapping still lingered. However, the girl's thoughts were interrupted by a loud knock on the door. The lady didn't even have time to chew her food. A maid entered the room and started fussing around. She brought a board and placed it against the wall in front of her. The woman set up a wooden table. Lady Leah watched in silence as the scene unfolded. Eru said it was time for a history lesson. The girl frowned. Sadness. She didn't understand the significance of what was happening and wondered why all this was necessary. The maid noticed they were running out of time, so she told the lady to sit down quickly. Once the preparations were complete, the lesson began. The woman started a lengthy story about the country they were in now, highlighting that it was one of the few governed by a monarchy. Although the country was small, most of the valuable resources belonged to the royal family. Additionally, it was a closed state where society strictly adhered to national traditions. In the mid-century, invasions by groups had brought some traditions that continued to exist in this country, for example, the current state of the king was deplorable. The first son, Carrion, was illegitimate and served as a deputy. The man trusted him, so his word was law. The maid emphasized that any attempt to insult or harm the king and his family would not go unpunished. Leah did not like this news. She expressed her dissatisfaction in her thoughts. Eru asked if the lady was listening, raised her hand, and said she had a question. She asked why there was such a large age difference between the eldest son, Kian, and the youngest. The narrator sighed deeply and continued, Not long ago, the eldest prince had died in an accident, so the second son took his place. The children of the second and third queens were quite a bit older but had less chance of gaining the throne. Leah pondered the king's three queens and wondered how many children he had. Frowning, she concluded that the old man was a pervert. The lady turned to Uru, noting that she had never answered her questions. Leo asked why the maid decided to teach her all this. The girl supported her cheek with the palm of her hand in disgust, feeling as if she were preparing for an exam. Eru explained that the lady was worried Leah was disrespecting the traditions. She instructed the woman to prepare the lady for a meeting with the regent. Leah sighed casually, saying it would be an eternity before it was her turn. The maid smiled and said she needed to be ready and leave immediately. The deepest surprise was visible in Leah's eyes. She couldn't believe what she was hearing. For a brief moment, the girls looked at each other in silence. Eru turned to the lady cautiously and asked if she was planning something wild. Lady Leah hastened to reassure the maid, assuring her there was nothing to worry about. She wouldn't do anything out of the ordinary. A dim light flickered in the dark room, barely illuminating the space. Purple stains were clearly visible on the cold cement floor, creating a sinister atmosphere. They belonged to a beaten, bleeding man who was tightly bound to a chair. The tall blonde noted with disgust that the prisoner had been well trained, his long hair was disheveled. Another man, wearing an expensive suit, stood in a corner of the room. He stated with certainty that the prisoner was no match for his companion. He then asked if there had been an answer to his question. The blonde said no, not really. The prisoner had claimed they were mercenaries in the palace but did not know who exactly, therefore, the man did not consider this a complete answer. He informed his associate that he needed to return to the palace, noting that the chief had ordered to follow the course of events. He also suggested that the nobles would be furious when they learned of their friend's return. At these words, the blonde said that last time he had made mistakes, but now he wouldn't err again. The time had come for a personal meeting between Lady Leo and Carrion. The lady wore a rather strange outfit covering from head to toe. A short employee met the girl and told her to follow him slowly down the hall. The pair moved toward the ruler's quarters. The man said that the regent was already waiting for her inside. They reached enormous wooden doors, and the servant said that the lady needed to enter this room. Leah thought she had been treated unfairly, being sent so suddenly without understanding the reason for it. A creak came from the chambers, and the girl tensed up. Uru uh, said it was just a meeting nothing bad should happen. Leah let out a stifled sigh, feeling as if she had indigestion. Summoning her strength, 
the lady entered the room. In front of her hung translucent yellow curtains extending from the ceiling to the floor, a black silhouette appeared behind the curtains, Leo assumed it was the regent, suddenly, he asked if she was Muslim, hesitantly, the girl answered no, the man then asked what she was wearing at that moment, the lady nervously clenched her fists, her face expressing worry, Leah replied that she was wearing a hook, the traditional dress of her home country, the situation was very stressful for Leah, Carrion, unable to resist, let out a quiet laugh and asked from which country she was, the question enraged the lady, the regent had kidnapped her, and she did not understand why he was asking this, she also wanted to get her cell phone back, Leah asked if the man did not know where she was from, in response, he ordered her to come closer. The regent asked what the girl had, he seemed to think she was taking the situation too lightly, Leah began to deny and insist that everything was completely wrong, suddenly, the man pulled aside the curtain, the lady blushed in surprise, in front of the girl, Carrion was seated, dressed in loose blue pants and an open robe, his chest trapped in bandages, Leo asked confusedly why the man was dressed like that, he gestured with his hand and replied that it was because of her, the lady did not understand why he said that she had never asked him to undress in front of her, Carrion leaned back on the sofa with an air of arrogance, saying that thanks to her, he almost died in the hall, fortunately, his bones remained intact however, he could not dress normally due to the pain covering his entire body. Leah stammered that it was an accident, she claimed that the man had appeared out of nowhere and really scared her, the regent ignored these words and looked the lady straight in the eye, suddenly, he ordered the girl to remove the robe, she frowned, not understanding what he was talking about, Carrion stood up slowly and walked toward the frightened lady, repeating his words threateningly, demanding that the rags be removed immediately, Leah realized that her feelings of indigestion were justified, she felt very ill, the silhouette of the approaching man began to blur, suddenly, the girl fell to the ground with a crash, losing consciousness. Post-traumatic stress disorder was the exact diagnosis given to Leah by the doctor, he prescribed medication and also advised her to keep negativity away from herself, there were two men in the room, sitting in the corner opposite the unconscious lady, they were talking intensely about something. Fares turned to Kian and asked what he was doing with the girl, the regent was clearly indignant by the question, the ruler asked the gentleman what he meant, not understanding what he was being taken for, deciding to answer the question, Carrion explained that he had only asked Leah to remove that strange clothing, the regent's face showed great emotion, he asked the boy if he was sure that the lady was not pretending, as it seemed impossible to disconnect so suddenly. The man calmly said no, that the girl's pulse was too slow, and the tips of her arms and legs were cold, even an actor couldn't perform such a production, the regent put his hand to his head in annoyance, feeling a throbbing in his temples, this situation irritated him greatly, he couldn't even ask anything, but of all the women, she was the strangest, driven by curiosity, Carrion suggested calling a doctor. Fares shook his head and said it wasn't worth it it was just a fainting spell. He claimed that the ruler couldn't hand over the lover to the arena, the man tried to offer his help but was interrupted in an angry tone, told not to touch the girl, the regent said he would take care of her himself, Fares simply stared at Carrion. The morning after. The man continued coldly, asserting earlier that it was not dangerous, so he wanted to ensure that Leah woke up. He had many questions and wouldn't find it difficult to wait a bit, after listening carefully to the conversation, the young man asked if he could leave, the regent nodded in approval without saying a word, the massive doors clicked shut silently behind him, Fares cast a perplexed glance before walking away. In the room, the regent was left alone with the sleeping girl, he wandered in his thoughts and remained still, after some time. The man regained his composure and cast an interested look at Leah, the lady lay quietly on the bed, deeply asleep, on her back with her arms wrapped around her thin stomach, Carrion realized that he hadn't been able to see the girl properly before due to her strange clothing, slowly, he examined every inch and curve of her body, he thought it was amusing, looking at the face of a woman who could have been a maid. 
His gaze settled on her full lips, and the thick black eyebrows knitted together in alarm. Carrion's breath stopped momentarily. Carefully leaning on the soft bed, he sat down, slightly hunched. The man was lost in thought, wondering how long he would have to wait. Recently, the man had assured him that the girl was about to wake up. Carrion made a promise to himself, he would surely find out where she was from, who was behind all of this, and the real reason why Leah had tried to kill him. The regent collapsed onto the bed, his constant pain giving him no peace. He decided to lie down for a minute, closing his sleepy eyes. The man continued to murmur something softly, promising to rest a bit before falling asleep. Under the cover of night, the city was shrouded in darkness, Leah had a dream again, it was of her mother's hated boyfriend, this was not the first time she had this nightmare, the girl was reliving a moment she wished she could forget forever, then, her eyes began to open slowly, morning had arrived, the light spread across the quiet streets of the city, marking the start of a new day, gradually, people began to buzz, filling the streets with noise, when Leah woke up, she felt an unpleasant aftertaste, she had dreamed of the nightmare again, which irritated her terribly, in front of her were long orange curtains, she was shocked for a moment, wondering where she was, Leah looked around warily, to her left, she saw a dark haired man sleeping, it was Regenti Kian, his hair dishevelled as he slept, partially covering his face. The lady was terrified to find herself in the same bed as a stranger, suddenly, she jumped up and moved away, then Leah realized who was lying beside her, the girl was overwhelmed with horror and screamed with all her strength, a piercing scream echoed throughout the castle, reflecting her fear, hearing the scream, the guards turned towards the ruler's quarters, tensing up in anticipation of a possible threat. With them was another man, the same dark-haired one with short hair, calmly, Fares told the guards to calm down there was nothing to worry about. Carrion also woke up involuntarily, exhaling deeply and asking who was making noise so early, his wounds still ached, reminding him of what had happened, looking around, the man saw a frightened girl, sitting with her knees hugged to her chest, also staring at him intently, the regent was left breathless, unable to speak, a bright blush appeared on the lady's face, and surprise reflected in her eyes, it was early morning, and there were two people in the room, the Prime Minister and the host, engaged in an important discussion. Morning time. The man turned towards the woman with a demanding expression, carefully placing the plate and cup on the table, looking her in the eyes, he asked if she had any chance, the manager of Rin declared that due to the previous events, she didn't see such a possibility, strange rumours were circulating in the palace, and the Prime Minister knew, they all had their suspicions, but none of the palace residents were willing to express personal opinions, the elderly man in the white robe sighed deeply he was indeed aware of this gossip. The man said that the assassin was one thing, but the rumours would lead to nothing good, then, the prime minister abruptly raised his head and asked how the new girl was doing, feeling that the regent had his eyes on her, the woman remained silent for a minute, after some time, she clarified if he was referring to number 20, she then added that she doubted the man's statement. At the same time, a couple was in the regent's quarters, Carrion and his companion were astonished by what was happening and looked at each other in confusion, the man began to remember that this was the same girl who had come the day before. He found it strange how distant she acted, Carrion got up and slowly began to approach his companion, he asked her not to misunderstand, the man wanted to continue but was interrupted by the sudden scream of the frightened girl, Leah screamed and demanded that the regent not touch her, she then grabbed the hem of her dress and ran towards the doors, the regent tried to stop the lady, but all his attempts were in vain, she wouldn't even listen to him. The man stood there, confused and disappointed, he had so many questions for the girl, but now he didn't know how to ask them, Leah ran out of the room and slammed the doors shut. She leaned against them, trying to catch her breath, the lady didn't understand exactly what scared her and why she was acting this way, the girl then looked up and saw the hallway filled with strangers who were eyeing her with suspicion, Leah began to stammer, trying to say something in her defense, she managed to say that nothing had happened, 
In response, these people just turned around, completely ignoring her. The girl continued shouting and swearing that nothing had happened. Leah kept moving quickly through the hallways, then decided to stop and take a break to catch her breath. The lady still couldn't forget what had happened she knew she had definitely fainted, this hadn't happened to her in a long time, the girl sighed deeply in frustration, knowing that the teacher would misunderstand this fact, it made her angry, and she expressed her feelings loudly and obscenely, suddenly, Leah saw a man lying next to a column, upon approaching him, she realized that he had lost consciousness, the lady was overcome with anxiety not knowing what to do or how to call for an ambulance. The girl, excited, ran to the unconscious body, gently shook the blonde man's shoulders, and asked if he was okay, then she grabbed the boy more forcefully and told him to wake up, she noticed he smelled of alcohol, when the blonde man woke up, he hummed for a long time, looked at the girl, and. The man asked what kind of angel was waking him from his sleep, Leah cast a suspicious glance pushed the boy's body, and he fell to the ground with a loud thud, the lady realized that he was perfectly fine, the man sat cross-legged, reflecting on how annoying it was, it turned out that the girl had managed much better than he expected. Behind him, the blonde man heard a familiar voice, it was Lady Aaron, who addressed him respectfully as Lord C. A. Tilda copyright sir, the woman asked what the man was doing there and in such a state. He returned the smile and noted that they hadn't seen each other in a long time, C.A. Tilda copyright Sarah explained that he had simply drunk too much with his friends the night before, he added that the hostess should know what these aristocrats are capable of, she looked at him with disdain. There were two men in the regent's office, despite his injuries, Regent Carrion was already dressed in casual clothes, he turned to Fares and asked if it wasn't the man's duty to protect him, frowning. He questioned why Fares had left him alone with the girl the night before, Fares responded that the lady did not pose any danger otherwise, he wouldn't have left Carrion alone with her. The regent concluded that the man trusted Leo and gave him a disapproving look, asking what would happen if he was wrong, Fares asserted that the primary targets were the king and the first prince therefore, the girl was not at risk, Carrion suggested not to worry, as she was the illegitimate child of the king. With a cold tone, the man said that if Leah turned out to be an assassin, he would get rid of her, his gaze was persistent and penetrating, reflecting the determination and seriousness of his intentions, Regent Kian nodded and stated that he needed to verify a few things before taking action. He ordered Fares to accompany him to Laren. The rumor spread like wildfire. Leah found it hard to believe that she was apparently the only one who had spent the whole night in Carrion's room, for a long time, strange gossip had circulated around the palace due to her indifference toward the women of Laren, which raised several questions and speculations among many, the girl thought about the possible preferences of the king's eldest son but quickly dismissed these thoughts, she felt this didn't make sense and didn't understand why she had been kidnapped. The lady concluded that this was not a matter for reflection at that moment. The blonde began to wonder if it was normal to flee from the regent's quarters so suddenly, although she was not familiar with the culture of this country, she knew that the king did exist here, Leah felt that the regent considered her crazy, then, behind her, Leah heard Uru's voice, with a sincere smile on her face, she said she was proud of her mistress, the maid added that even the manager had told her that she should take special care of Leah, however, these words only made her angrier, the girl rebelled and started shouting that nothing had happened between them that night, Eru shivered in surprise, and the hairs on her arms stood up, calmly, the maid asked why the lady was so angry, Leah tried to find the right words, but her thoughts were interrupted by a sudden knock on the door, a man's voice from the hallway announced confidently the arrival of Regent Carrion. Eru turned around, paralyzed with surprise, the girl was filled with the same astonishment and couldn't believe the man had come here. The maid turned to Leah, intending to inform her that the regent had arrived, but the lady was already gone, her sudden disappearance left the woman perplexed, the regent entered the room accompanied by Fares, all they saw was a confused Eru standing in the center of the room with a puzzled expression on her face. 
The man looked at the maid and realized that the lady was no longer there. Carrion's companion looked thoughtfully out the windows, the maid leaned forward apologetically, saying that the girl had definitely been there just a few minutes ago, the regent asked if this room belonged to Leo and if the lady had just been there, Eru answered affirmatively. Carrion couldn't understand where she had gone, he looked vacantly, pondering possible escape options, at that moment, the missing girl was standing behind a column separating the arched windows. Her delicate feet were bare, and her long dress fluttered carelessly in the wind, Leah couldn't understand why Carrion was coming to her, she hadn't thought he would ever come, annoyed, the lady realized it was too early in the morning for her, suddenly, the girl lost her balance and stumbled, unable to support herself, she began to fall from a small ledge, Leah was overwhelmed with desperate thoughts, fear and helplessness made her heart race. She couldn't believe she might die right now in this unfamiliar place, the lady couldn't hold back her scream, then, an unfamiliar hand grabbed her by the right shoulder and felt an unpleasant tension there, it turned out to be Fares, who carefully lifted Leo and set her on the ground, stammering. The girl sincerely thanked the man, saying she could have died if it weren't for him, her face flushed awkwardly. Fares responded dryly that he was just doing his duty for his master and then advised the lady to be more careful in the future, turning away, the man walked off, the girl was very surprised by his behavior, she had expected that he would certainly turn her over to Carrion after this incident, the regent visited Leah twice, worried, Eru turned to the lady and said she had escaped from him again, the maid was trying to tie her thick hair into a ponytail and asked why the girl was doing this repeatedly. Leah replied that it wasn't difficult to figure out, she asked what Eru wanted to achieve by asking these questions, the woman responded that she couldn't understand why the lady was avoiding the regent, she suggested that maybe Leah hated him, Leah confirmed this confidently, Eru said that Carrion had not given any chances to the other women who tried to catch his attention, but it was in vain, that's why everyone was so excited at the moment. Some high-born noble woman had joined Rin from their family's sake, now that they had been abandoned, they felt humiliated, Leah asked why they came here willingly, the maid answered without hesitation that the women did this to gain the king's favor, Eru continued, saying that nobles sent their daughters and nieces as gifts to the monarch to gain more power, these words opened the lady's eyes, she used to think that all them had also been kidnapped, suddenly, the entrance doors burst open, interrupting the maid, a crowd of women stormed into the room, one of them began to ridicule the room with disdain, saying it was the size of her closet, the lady was startled for a moment, thinking it was Regent Kian again, however, it turned out to be the same noblewoman Eru had spoken about, meanwhile, an important meeting was taking place in the main hall, many men sat at a long table discussing current issues actively and vigorously, at the head of the table was Regent Kian, who tapped the surface with his fingers, ignoring all the conversations, the man couldn't stop thinking about Leah, he felt she was clearly avoiding him, his eyes were filled with fear, like those of the helpless animal being hunted, Carrion couldn't even imagine that the girl could be an assassin, it was too much for her. The Regent then suggested that maybe he was wrong, suddenly, his deep thoughts were interrupted by the Prime Minister, who cleared his throat slightly to get the ruler's attention. The old man said that everyone present was waiting for his approval, the regent quickly scanned the text, angrily throwing a pile of papers on the table and starting to shout, he asked if everyone was seriously considering these budget proposals, Kian had never seen any country organize its budget in this way, instead of thinking about the country and the people. Everyone was only concerned with their personal well-being, all present lowered their heads in embarrassment, the ruler asked if they had really done this so far, then he saw a pile of papers scattered all over the room and was astonished that the country had not yet fallen into ruins. He ordered everyone to present appropriate amendments to the budget, the regent spoke in a threatening tone, warning that if the situation did not change, no one would receive a penny this year. Kian's speech was interrupted by the sudden voice of the envoy, who, after apologizing, reported a small problem, two women were fighting furiously, grabbing each other's hair, their faces were distorted with anger, 
and their eyes shone with determination, the astonished girls and servants watched with their mouths open, there was a tense silence in the air, broken only by the sounds of the fight, the lover growled fiercely that the woman had chosen the wrong opponent, insisting she was definitely the leader in this fight, the brunette grabbed her opponent's hands and tried to pull them away from her head, suddenly, she screamed in distress over her own hair, the woman yelled, demanding to be let down, and called her barbaric, Leah looked sternly at her rival and pointed out that it all started with. The lady recalled an old story, there was a time when she thought she was the problem, this thought depressed her greatly, soon, she grew tired of being blamed for everything, Leah repeatedly tried to explain everything, but people didn't believe her and thought she was just making excuses, later, the woman realized that she was not responsible for other people's emotions and actions, once, a situation occurred where a colleague began to express a negative attitude towards her, the redhead told everyone that Leah was the daughter of her lover, in her opinion, this explained the lover's behavior that day, the girl fought with this hooligan and won, that's how high school girls can be in Korea, from then on, Leah considered her a stubborn girl and really thought she would lose all her hair that day. Suddenly, the Lady Everin burst into the room, asking what the girls were doing there and ordering them to stop immediately, the lady froze, staring intently at the manager, then she noticed a familiar face in the hallway, and her eyes widened in surprise, Regent Carrion was near the door, she was tormented by the question of why he had chosen that particular moment to be there. The girl immediately released the brunette's long hair, she fell in and started to scream loudly. The woman said that Leo attacked her first and thus deserved punishment, ignoring the lady's words. The lady slowly turned to the woman, her face showing contained curiosity as she calmly asked for an explanation of what really happened. The girl stood frozen for a moment, carefully considering her words. She knew that if she made a mistake, Eru would be in trouble again. Taking a deep breath, Leah said that the brunette attacked first, so she simply responded with a mutual attack, the woman asked what this could mean. Suddenly, the dialogue was interrupted by the regent, who informed the hostess that he wished to speak with the lady alone, the girl was shocked by this statement and couldn't accept the fact that she would have to speak with Carrion again, the manager of Ren bowed respectfully and quickly ordered everyone present to go to their rooms, two women, firmly holding the hated brunette's hands, headed toward the exit, she continued to complain, wiping her nose, Leah looked at the retreating crowd with pleading eyes, urging them to stay, the corners of her lips turned down, then the door closed with a soft click, the girl turned towards the ruler, Fares was still standing next to him, this surprised her, but she quickly remembered that the man was the regent Carrion's guard. Carrion continued to silently observe his lover, she felt uncomfortable standing in front of him since she hadn't had time to change clothes, Leah felt exposed in that pink nightgown and couldn't understand why the sight of this man always made it hard for her to breathe, this time was no exception, when the man suddenly started speaking, the lady shivered, and her tender cheeks flushed a bright red, Carrion was glad to finally have the opportunity to speak with Leah in person. Looking her in the eyes, he asked why the girl had been avoiding him all the time, the lady was surprised that the region tasked so directly, she said it was a misunderstanding and that she hadn't avoided him, they simply hadn't crossed paths. The regent decided to immediately move on to the topic of conversation, he said that as long as the girl didn't lose consciousness like last time, she could answer all his questions, Carrion asked whether Blonde was from and who had sent her here. Without hiding her emotions, Leah frowned in anger and said she didn't understand the essence of the question since the regent himself had kidnapped her, the men's faces showed deep surprise, the ruler asked why he should have kidnapped the lady, she responded that it was she who should be asking those questions, the regent genuinely did not understand what she was talking about, the girl began to wonder what she was doing this time. The man then replied that he didn't believe her. Carrion stated that they were in a closed country, but such serious crimes were unacceptable, Leah responded that he should have asked the chief of Arun about this too, she added that, in her opinion, 
This country was at least 100 years behind in its development, the girl doubted that there were adequate laws here and considered it completely uncivilized. Moreover, she didn't like the clothes here either, Carrion said he completely agreed with the lady, however, it was disrespectful to belittle the culture of a foreign country, he did not give her permission to insult its state, Leah couldn't stand it and started shouting, she expressed that if she hadn't been kidnapped, she would have had nothing to do with this country, furthermore, if the regent suspected her so much, he should have just let her go, the lady would have been happy to leave, the couple stared at each other in silence for several seconds, breaking the pause, Carrion said that he could not allow this, after these words, the conversation ended, and the man left the room, the ruler walked slowly down the hallway, thinking, for a moment, he felt the need to apologize to Leah, it was possible that his belief that she was a criminal was wrong, the regent turned to Fares, who was walking behind him, and ordered him to call the chief of rent to his office, Fares asked if Carrion believed the lady's words, the man slightly turned and firmly replied that he did not, kidnapping had been abolished during his grandfather's lifetime, the guard asked why the regent had called the hostess, suggesting that the regent might be plotting something, Carrion nodded approvingly, smiling mysteriously, and said that the woman would not like the news, Leah recalled the regent's words and held on to the fact that, under no circumstances, could she allow herself to be released, however, the girl knew from the beginning that the regent wouldn't believe her, it seemed that he took her for a maid, which deeply displeased her, the lady noticed that the maid behind her began to carefully fold some things, at that moment, the lady of Arun entered the room and asked Aru to hurry, she bowed obediently, Leo asked what they were doing, to be clear, the woman simply ordered to pack the clothes, nothing more, the maid bowed again, the girl realized that they were simply ignoring her, raising her voice significantly, she asked again what the women were doing. The manager replied that she had been ordered to move the lady to another room, Leah's face showed surprise, she raised her eyebrows indignantly and asked why they were doing this without her consent. The woman looked at the girl with disdain, she had not liked her from the beginning, so it made no sense to ask for consent, the hostess also couldn't understand how Leah dared to lie to Regent Carrion about the kidnapping, she then harshly said that the lady should not have asked such questions, the woman asked if Leah really didn't understand her situation, the regent had the right to do whatever he wanted since his word was law. Leah felt terribly uncomfortable, summoning her courage, she asked where she was being moved to, the girl thought that the manager was taking revenge on her for what happened last time, she wondered if the new room would be worse, although she wasn't entirely opposed, the woman then said that the lady would be moved to room number zero. Leah frowned in disbelief, surprised by what she heard, she asked the hostess to repeat it because she hadn't heard correctly, the manager repeated more clearly which apartment the lady was going to move to, adding that, judging by the number, this was the room closest to the regent, the girl's face paled, her heart started to race, and her limbs were seized by a cold, unpleasant tingling sensation. Then, throughout the palace, a scream echoed that Leah didn't want to move to a new room, the lady was overcome with inconsolable pain, she clung to the edge of the sofa and screamed that she also liked being here. The maid, alarmed, tried diligently to calm her down and make her see reason, after a while, Eru abandoned this idea, saying that tantrums were useless, even if Leah didn't want it, she couldn't refuse. The manager could no longer listen to the whining, and grabbing the girl by the jacket, he bluntly declared that she was nothing but a problem. Gradually, it began to darken, twilight enveloped everything softly, like dark velvet absorbing the last rays of the sun, a man stood still in the hallway, speaking quietly with a stranger who had disappeared behind a marble column, an unexpected situation had arisen, the man warned that it might be necessary to change plans, he then asked his interlocutor about the woman, the stranger said that, Curiously, no one knew anything, he asked his companion about their next steps, the companion replied that they did not yet have the full picture, so they would have to wait a bit and then execute the plan, the interlocutor said he understood everything, the ruler was in a room where a warm light burned in some corners, he was sitting at a table with dark glasses, 
immersed in analyzing some documents, his long hair was gathered in a ponytail, with some strands falling over his forehead, piles of papers were stacked around him like a bastion, Fares entered the room and, with disappointment, reported that the regent had missed dinner again, the man asked if they should bring him here, Carrion firmly replied that no, and removing his glasses, he closed the folder he was working on and announced that he was finishing with irritation, the ruler said he could not complete all the work even if he did not sleep for several nights. He claimed that the country was in complete disorder and he did not know where to start. Fares, looking from beneath his brows, said that the regent should not have pressured himself so much, otherwise he would end up in prison before starting to reform the country. Kian remained silent for a minute and then asked if the guard had followed his orders, he replied that there had been some minor issues but they managed to get the job done, noting the regent's raised eyebrows, he added that the girl had categorically refused to change rooms. The regent smiled slightly and stood up from the table, finding the woman's behavior amusing, suddenly, Fares turned impartially to the regent and asked why he decided to move the lady his expression remained unshakable, the man replied that she had lied to him about being kidnapped, so he assumed that the girl was hiding something. Besides, room number zero had become available, Kian added that friends should be close, and enemies even closer. Fares did not say anything, he did not believe that the regent fully understood the significance of this room, but it was not that important, the night was already deep and the stars in the sky shone especially brightly, decorating the dark canvas of the sky and creating a charming and tranquil atmosphere. As soon as the girls entered Leah's new room, Eru, who had worked as a maid since she was young, was astonished and delighted. The room was furnished to the taste of the late queen, as the previous first prince had felt lonely. Having lived here for a long time, the maid could continue the story, but Leah interrupted her. She asked her to stop pacing back and forth, breathing heavily, the girl covered her mouth with her hands she wasn't feeling well, Eru quickly ran to the lady and offered to call a doctor, but Leah declined, she thought she would feel better if she just rested, all she needed was a prescription, but clearly, they didn't have that here. The maid looked at Leah disapprovingly, pausing briefly. She wished her a good night's sleep and finally decided to clarify if the girl needed anything else. After a long yawn, Leah waved her hand, indicating that she could leave. She was very eager to sleep. Before leaving, the maid glanced at Leah again and thanked her for defending her. No one had ever done that for Eru before. Without letting the lady finish, the maid closed the doors and stood there for a minute more, thinking about what had just happened. Leah realized she did this because she had also wanted someone to defend her in the past, this understanding left her thoughtful for a while. Looking around at the luxurious bed, the girl involuntarily let out an awkward laugh, she tried to calm herself by breathing deeply, but a strong excitement did not leave her body, the lady removed the orange skirt, which touched the floor lightly, and wondered why no one had been in the room for so long, Leah felt a slight sense of fear. Then a creak came from the corner of the room, and her skin tingled, the girl thought she had just heard a creak, suddenly, quick footsteps were heard behind her again, her face paled with fear, and her body froze, unable to move, Leah definitely heard something, then, a dark silhouette passed by like a lightning bolt, moving with a swift and sharp sound, scared, the lady asked who it was, she assumed it was Uru, but the figure remained silent. There was a deathly silence in the room, at that moment, the girl recalled her maid's words that the room was furnished to the taste of the late queen and that no one had occupied it for a long time, Leah began to have strange and disturbing thoughts, for a moment, she suggested that the room might still be haunted by the ghost of the late queen, this fear coursed through the girl to her bones, she concluded that the regent had forced her to move here to be sacrificed for purification. Suddenly. Near the arch door, the girl noticed part of a leg, it was definitely a living person, quickly gathering her courage, Leah ran towards that place, she was sure someone was there, as ghosts couldn't have legs, grabbing the edge of the wall, the lady peeked around and asked who was there, she expected to see something but definitely not this, 
The girl's eyes widened in surprise as she turned the corner and found a long corridor opened in front of her. It was a secret passageway illuminated by bright lanterns, with arch-shaped walls creating the impression of an ancient underground corridor. Leah recalled who had previously lived in this room and where it was located. She realized that this was a place where romantic adventures took place. In the end, she decided to delve deeper. The lady couldn't sleep, suspecting that someone was in the room. No one knew what might have happened to her while she slept. Leah moved slowly and cautiously, sliding along the walls with one hand and clenching the other into a fist, ready to defend herself. She was sure that someone had been hiding there just a moment ago. The passageway was shorter than she expected. At the end, there was only a wooden door. The girl wondered where the regent was headed. He was in his quarters. Having just taken a hot bath, a white towel was wrapped around his hips. The man let out a long sigh, completely exhausted after a hard day's work. Carrion thought that Fares might be right. He had been pushing himself too hard lately. Suddenly, the regent heard the creak of a door opening. To his surprise, he saw Leah in the hallway. She was dressed in a snow-white nightgown, and as she looked around the room without noticing him, she heard a rough voice asking what she was doing there. Leah then saw Carrion, naked from head to toe, and fell into the deepest horror. The man turned back towards the lady, but before he could say anything, she apologized and quickly left the room. The regent had mixed feelings, he shouted for her to wait, but she had no intention of stopping and continued running. The girl ran down the hallway with all her might, afraid to open her eyes, she repeated aloud that she saw nothing. Leah couldn't understand why that door led to her room and why Carrion was naked. Behind her, she heard a shout, the man told her to stop immediately. Turning around, the lady saw that he was already approaching her. The girl began to feel unwell, her vision started to darken, and her ears filled with the thunder of approaching footsteps. Carrion quickly realized that Leah was about to fall, he made a swift move and gently caught her by the back, annoyed, the man noticed that she had lost consciousness again, he didn't understand why the woman did this every time. The regent was irritated by the situation, holding her by the shoulder, he told her to wake up, but it was in vain, Carrion couldn't believe that she had fainted again, the regent tried to recall Fair's instructions, check her pulse, arms, and legs. The man then seemed to lose his focus, exploring every inch of her body meticulously, paying special attention to her plump lips. Carrion's free hand inadvertently came closer to the girl, she shuddered, and the regent seemed to snap back to reality, he realized he hadn't met his father's expectations. The man lifted his head and looked around, wondering which way to proceed. Morning had arrived, and the bright sun flooded the room with light streaming through the windows, its rays played on the walls, creating a warm and cozy atmosphere, Leah woke up to an unpleasant noise the sound of pages being turned continuously, creating an endless rustling of paper. Still half asleep, the girl turned towards Uru, her voice sounded drowsy as she asked what time it was, however, it wasn't her maid who answered, but an extremely familiar voice, the man said he would be arriving a little late today. Leah's drowsiness vanished instantly, she jumped out of bed, covering herself with a powder-colored blanket, her face showed deep surprise. The calm regent was sitting across from her, carefully comparing two documents without paying attention to the girl, Leah hugged herself tighter, her eyes filled with surprise and anxiety, stammering with emotion, she asked what he had forgotten, the man, Carrion asked in a calm voice if she had forgotten what happened last night, he added reproachfully that it seemed to have become her habit to faint and wake up in front of him. Not understanding what the regent was referring to, the girl apologized, then, memories of the secret passage she had discovered the previous day began to return to her, realizing what she had seen, Leah felt the color spread across her face, stammering even more, she tried to explain what had happened. The regent continued to study the documents intently, not looking at his lady even once, he asked if she was going to faint again, Leah was terribly indignant at the question because she couldn't control this condition, the girl explained that her fainting was caused by illness, Carrion asked if medicine would help, 
The lady quoted the doctor's words, eliminate the cause of the stress, noting that she would only be fine if she stopped seeing the regent. The man looked at Leah for the first time and stated that he disagreed with this. This answer surprised her, and she asked why, but Carrion ignored her question. He suddenly remembered an important point and decided that they needed to discuss some issues to avoid potential misunderstandings. With a soft tap on the stack of papers on the table, smoothing it out, he asked Leah to sit down. She complied obediently with his request. Carrion asked if the lady had entered his room last night with the intention to. The question surprised her she didn't understand what the man was talking about. The girl said that the regent was deeply mistaken. She explained that she was simply following strange noises in the room. At first, Leah thought it was a ghost. However, she later convinced herself that there was definitely a person in her room. The regent asked if she had seen the person's face. The girl replied that she hadn't because the room was too dark. The man looked down and said that the secret passage ended in a dead end where his bedroom was located. Leah continued to insist that she was telling the truth. She pleaded with Carrion to believe her because she had really seen someone there. Then, the girl looked at him with a curious expression filled with confusion. She asked why he needed to kill the person, considering that she was a victim of a kidnapping. The regent offered to clarify the situation. He confidently stated that he hadn't kidnapped her. The girl thought for a moment perhaps it really wasn't his doing. Carrion added that he had conducted his own investigation asking the owner about the kidnapping, but she had categorically denied everything, she claimed that nothing of the sort had ever happened. Unable to bear it, Leah asked if the man had ever heard of a criminal confessing to their own crimes, naturally, they denied it and said they knew nothing, Leah didn't like the disdainful look the man gave her, confused, she decided to ask him why he was looking at her that way. Carrion sighed deeply and asked the girl to explain how she had been kidnapped, his words were calm and decisive. Afterward, he began to briefly outline his story. The girl said that on the day of the kidnapping, she had wanted to go to the airport restroom, after that, she remembered nothing, the regent looked at her with even greater suspicion and sarcastically asked if Leah would believe these words if she were in his place, the girl simply looked at him, discouraged not knowing what to do because she really didn't remember anything. Carrion pushed his chair back and slowly got up from his seat, he said it was time to leave since he had an important meeting soon, they could continue the conversation a little later, Leah looked at the floor and asked the regent to wait because she had a question, she asked why he had placed her near his room if he believed she was a killer. The regent looked at the lady mysteriously while walking towards the exit and said that the old room was too far to visit. The girl silently noted that in this case, the regent might not come back. Then, the man turned around. Remembering something again, Leah wanted to make one more thing clear. Carrion decided to find out if Leah knew that she was in an arena. She responded that of course she knew and wondered what he was trying to say with that. The regent quickly continued his thought with a smile, saying that in that case, the girl should understand that she was one of the women in his arena. Leah's eyes suddenly widened in surprise and irritation, the regent's words deeply offended her, provoking a storm of indignation. After leaving his lover's room, Carrion carefully closed the doors behind him, Fares was waiting in front of him, his gaze as calm and penetrating as ever. The regent asked if Fares had heard everything, the guard confirmed that he had. Having received the desired answer, Carrion asked what Fares thought about Leah's words. Fares stated that it was almost impossible to enter the secret corridor without passing through the guards, they had long firmly defended the palace and the arena, consequently, if her words were true, then the Prime Minister was right, Carrion frowned thoughtfully realizing clearly that the assassin might be hiding in the arena. Looking up, the guard noticed that this time, their target might not be the regent. The men's faces suddenly became cautious and very serious. Fair suggested that the lady might have fabricated the story to avoid suspicion. His interlocutor nodded in agreement. Then the guard asked if Carrion had checked the girl for weapons. He replied that he had thoroughly searched her while she was unconscious, including her underwear. Fares awkwardly smiled with his eyes wide open. 
The regent cleared his throat, apologized, and said that the girl had nothing against her. After this, the ruler attentively looked at his guard and ordered him to conduct a secret investigation and take care of the kidnapping. The man bowed slightly and said he understood. Looking down, Carrion added that it was also necessary to reinforce security. Leah continued sitting sadly in her own room, deeply contemplating the regent's earlier words. The girl sat at the edge of the bed, finding that some things really did not add up. She began to believe that the regent had not kidnapped her. Everyone knew and said that the arena did not awaken much interest in Carrion, so he had no reason to. However, the lady was affected by the regent's suspicions that she might be an assassin. Of course, she would have liked to kill him for many reasons, but such a statement upset her. As each hour passed within four walls, Leah's mood worsened. The regent had assured her that he would return after the meeting. The girl wondered how much longer she would have to wait to resume her thoughts. Leah came up with a real thought. Did the man think she joined the arena on purpose because she was ordered to kill him? Leah still didn't understand why he suspected her. Was she really acting suspiciously? The girl dismissed these thoughts and decided she was mistaken. Absorbed in her thoughts, the lady decided to go out to rest. She slowly stood up and headed for the exit, but a great surprise awaited her behind the door. Right next to the entrance stood a huge, bald man in a red shirt with black stripes. What Leah saw made her freeze, her eyes widened, and her mouth dropped open in astonishment. Her eyebrows arched, and she felt a chill run down her arms. The girl asked who the man was. He answered curtly that he was a guard. In a low voice, she delicately asked him to step aside frowning slightly, the guard told her to go back inside, he reported that Regan Carrion had told him to wait in the room until he returned, a cold sweat ran down Leah's face, hearing the man, she obediently went back to her room and closed the door with a creak, the girl couldn't believe that the regent had sent a guard to her, Leah was very upset, she didn't like being treated like a criminal, then Leah suggested that she might have been given the idea that she was an assassin, at that moment, the girl decided she needed to talk to Carrion. She wondered what would happen if he still didn't believe her. Being kidnapped was enough. Leah assumed that now they might send her to prison without a doubt. All this time, the lady hadn't even suspected that Fares was watching her. He behaved very secretly and cautiously. The man realized that the young woman's monologue had ended. After that, he headed to the secret passage to explore it. Fares crouched down and carefully examined the surface, noticing clear traces of the two who hadn't even thought to erase them. After a while, the dark-skinned man recognized another footprint, though it was carefully hidden. There was undoubtedly a third person there. Fares realized that the lady was indeed telling the truth. The only problem was how to find out. Fares decided to walk to the end of the secret corridor and exit through the regent's room carefully closing the doors behind him. He was frozen for a second when, to his great surprise, Prince C.A. Tilda Copyrights O was sitting in front of him, smiling. C.A. Tilda Copyrights R said he hadn't expected to see him here. The knight added that if he didn't know Fares, he would have suspected that Fares had a connection with the woman everyone was talking about. The man didn't react to the prince's words, looking down and asking what had brought him here. C.A. Tilda Copyright Sar confidently stated that his goal was to meet with Kian, but he didn't expect to see an old acquaintance here. The arrogant prince mentioned that he thought Fares had been demoted and sent to the field. The dark-skinned man gritted his teeth and said that Regan Carrion had reinstated him. The blonde prince replied that he would have done the same. Fares was the best knight in the country, and the first prince would still be alive if Fares had been in the palace from the beginning. The dark-skinned man turned to Prince C.A. Tilda Copyright Sar cautiously, interrupting his statement. Knowing it was forbidden to discuss this topic, he simply sought to find out the reason. Suddenly, the knight stood up quickly from his chair. He said that Carrion was running late and would need to meet him again. With the doors now open, C.A. Tilda Copyright Sar announced that he was waiting for another party to which he had been invited. Then a characteristic click was heard and silence filled the room. The lady paced the room like a bird in a cage, her face was focused, but her eyes moved rapidly, reflecting deep thoughts and doubts.
The reason Carrion had put her in room zero was to monitor her he believed she was an assassin, Leah now thought that the man had other intentions, but that was not what relieved her, the girl bowed her head, she would never commit murder, then she was overtaken by a wave of angry frustration, collapsing onto the sofa, the lady sighed indignantly and then rested her elbow on the back of the sofa, trying to relax. Leah could not imagine the punishment for killing a member of the royalty in this country they could even be executed for insulting the royal family, however, this would not be the case if she stabbed him with a knife, the girl began to think about the reasons that made the regent suspect her. Perhaps he had changed his opinion about her because of that accident in the garden, or maybe the man was paranoid, the second assumption seemed completely correct to Leah. The royal family had faced many dangers and life-threatening situations throughout history, the problem was that no matter how many times the girl said no, Carrion did not believe her, she did not understand how she could prove her innocence. Then the door to her quarters opened, and a maid entered, placing a stack of books on the table, she said she had brought everything the lady had requested, Leah glanced at the stack of three textbooks and laughed awkwardly. The girl found it hard to believe she had to study law and history from another country, she thought to herself that if she had studied like this for the university entrance exam, she might have been able to get into Seoul University, then, pleased, Eru asked what else the lady wanted. Leah looked at the woman and said she had a question, it was important to know if strangers could enter the arena, the maid firmly replied that only their representatives had free access, however, Due to strict security measures, no one else was allowed to enter, Eru asked why the lady was asking this, she responded calmly that she was just curious, Leah noticed that all the maids were local girls and then turned to Eru again because she wanted to ask some questions about the recently deceased prince. As night fell slowly over the surroundings, one by one, the bright lanterns were lit, the luxurious room came to life becoming even more cozy and mysterious at this time of the evening, besides the thick books, Leah lay on the table, peacefully asleep, and her steady breathing filled the room with calm, suddenly, a large shadow appeared over the sleeping girl, with a swift movement of his hand, the man took the book from beneath her head, causing her to unpleasantly hit her head against the table, the lady screamed, shivering and wide-eyed, trying to understand what had happened. Leah got up and, enraged, began to rub the sore spot on her head, expressing her anger. She opened her mouth to ask who had acted so rudely, but her lips froze without saying a word, Regent Carrion was standing in front of her, the man said that a girl shouldn't drool over the scriptures of this country and asked why she was using those books as pillows, the lady's face turned red with embarrassment as she explained that she had been locked in the room all day. Leah added that aside from reading books and sleeping, there were no other activities. Carrion disagreed with her and proudly declared that there was another option, the girl asked what that could be, the regent said that the lady could make him happy, which was the responsibility of the women of her, without waiting to hear this, Leah let out a scandalous laugh, then she stood up and demanded that the man stop making annoying jokes, the girl added that everyone knew he wasn't interested in her. These words made Carrion smile involuntarily, the regent asked if this meant the lady thought the same, Leah's skin tingled as she realized she had made a mistake and felt the need to change the subject as quickly as possible. Leah clumsily explained that wasn't exactly what she meant, in any case, after their conversation this morning, she wanted to know more, the girl suggested that the regent suspected she had murdered the first prince, surprise appeared on his face. Carrion frowned and asked who she had heard that from, these words convinced the lady that her assumption was correct, then the regent flatly stated that the incident had nothing to do with her, she began to contradict him, saying that she was suspected here, Leah was starting to get angry because she had been kidnapped and accused of a crime, she disliked the fact that she could easily be executed in a foreign country thousands of miles from home. Carrion recalled Fair's words after a brief investigation, confirming that the lady had not lied, the man was sure there were traces of another person in the room, Leah began to speak about having no choice but to prove her innocence, she didn't know anyone in this country who could help her, 
the region tasked what the girl was trying to say, she looked at the floor and responded that she wanted to make a deal with him, the regent, intrigued, asked what kind of agreement was being discussed, his eyes showed genuine interest and curiosity, the lady stated that she was willing to help the man find the criminal, she realized it would be difficult to conduct an open investigation if the villain was in the arena, Carrion was astonished and asked if Leah could really find the murderer, she replied that she had been in her room all day, the regent had nothing to lose. He understood that by concluding such a deal, the girl expected something in return, he politely asked her what she wanted, the lady said that if she found the culprit and everything was resolved, Carrion would be obligated to allow her to leave the country. The regent and his personal guard were in his office, the regent explained in detail to Fares the deal he had proposed to the lady, outlining all the terms and conditions, the regent, with a bored expression, lazily asked Fares what he thought about it, his gaze was tired, and the corners of his mouth barely turned downwards. The man shivered and asked Carrion what he wanted to consult about, a slight concern appeared on his face, with his fist on his cheek. Carrion replied that they were discussing the so-called agreement, Fares quickly recovered and said that the girl had acted wisely, they did not have free access to the arena, so the investigation would likely be limited, the man added that they also couldn't avoid suspicion. Then, with a serious voice, he mentioned that another problem had recently arisen, this statement caught Kian's attention, recently, Fares had learned that Prince Saram would be returning. The palace had already begun actively preparing for his reception, the regent involuntarily laughed and said that this would definitely become a problem, then the man sighed deeply, realizing the magnitude of the disaster, the regent said that Prince C.A. Tilda copyright Sir had also returned a few days ago, in this situation, a war between them could certainly erupt. Fares looked down and noticed that Kian knew little about Prince Aram, as they had never crossed paths. Without allowing the interlocutor to finish, the regent suggested that the man was vile, vicious, and cruel, he was aware that the dark-skinned man suspected him of orchestrating the previous incident, Fares added that the traditionalists fully supported the prince, he was sure that from then on, he would start finding faults in everything, which would also affect Carrion's leadership and masculinity, perhaps Aram had done the same with the deceased first prince. The regent was surprised by the mention of masculinity in this context, his eyebrows raised slightly, expressing surprise. Fares explained that bad rumors had recently circulated around the palace, therefore, the prince would definitely use this weakness against him, the regent's face began to take on a confident expression, he realized that the man was hinting at using this girl, he did not respond to the assumption. Kian recalled the lady's words that he was not interested in the arena and gradually started to guess what the old king was doing, however, there were other ways. Morning arrived, and the sky turned a clear blue, heralding the start of a new day, despite this, the buildings were still in shadows, casting long, dark silhouettes on the streets, gradually, the light began to enter through the windows, filling the space with warmth, in this soft morning light, the lady awoke. Leah slowly approached the edge of the bed, her gaze sleepy and distracted, the words of Carrion about how he would think about her proposal still lingered in her mind, irritating her unbearably, her life was at stake, and he seemed to be simply enjoying himself, she concluded that he was simply terrible. The lady then assumed that this was how Carrion was rejecting her, in other words, he might be laughing at her. Leah tried to ensure that she wasn't an expert all her knowledge was based on movies and TV shows, however, these attempts were unsuccessful, the girl knelt down. Offended, she didn't understand what had gone wrong in her life, she had hoped to do an internship abroad to escape her boring routine, but things turned out differently, suddenly, a stomp was heard, an excited maid burst through the door with a sad expression on her face, Leah asked what was wrong. The maid informed her that Regent Carrion had urgently called her to his home. The lady quickly composed herself and headed toward the Regent. Upon entering the room, she saw a man sitting at a table. The girl was surprised to realize that it was her personal account. She had expected it to be elegant and luxurious, but everything turned out quite modest. 
Leah tensed up as the man began to speak, he confidently stated that he would accept her offer, for a moment, she was filled with joy upon hearing this. However, the lady frowned with a smile, Carrion firmly stated that he also had a condition, the girl categorically opposed it, the regent raised an irritated eyebrow and asked why she responded that way without even listening to him. Leo explained that she was putting herself in extreme danger by agreeing to investigate to find the killer, she thought it was unfair for the man to impose additional conditions. The regent laughed thoughtfully, resting his chin on his hand, and declared that the girl was not in a position to refuse, then Carrion stood up slowly and reminded the lady that she was the one who proposed the deal, with confident steps, the regent approached Leah, he said that if she didn't want it anymore. She could spend the rest of her days in his arena, the girl looked at the man in silence, her eyes wide open, her blood seemed to freeze in her veins, it was very bad on his part, she had no choice but to accept his condition, trying to hide her indignation. Leah asked what he wanted, she tried to read the real reason in his eyes, to start, Carrion said it was a secret agreement, after a brief pause, the regent continued, he said that no matter what happened, the lady should not have any feelings, as he said these words, the man approached the girl, his lips almost touched hers, and he looked directly into her eyes, her breath stopped involuntarily. Leah anxiously affirmed that she understood everything, she internally noted that under no circumstances would she fall in love with him, Carrion laughed, satisfied, and smiled, now that they had reached an agreement. He offered to discuss the details of his condition, the lady did not understand what was happening, she felt uncomfortable, as if she were under the regent's control, however, she had no other option. Later, in the presence of Fares, the regent signed the agreement, the sound of a pen sliding across the paper was heard, with a satisfied expression on his face, the girl declared that the job was done, then she added that she had one last request. Kian looked at her with disgust, the man asked what she wanted, smiling widely, Leah replied that it was nothing complicated, the regent didn't have to worry. As it turned out a little later, the lady requested to go for a walk. The wind whispered through the leaves of the trees, creating a pleasant rustling sound, and the bird's songs played vividly in the background, the girl sighed with satisfaction, her happiness knew no bounds. She finally felt free because she thought she might suffocate in that room, the terms of the contract did not fully satisfy her, but it could not be avoided, she decided to think about everything tomorrow. Suddenly, from behind the bushes, she heard a heart-wrenching scream asking for help, a woman's voice was desperately pleading for someone to let her go, tense, Leah thought she should have gone to help, the lady wasn't sure what she should do, there probably was no one else in the garden. A cold sweat appeared on her face, the girl didn't understand why the guards had not yet moved toward the scream, they should have heard it, after a few seconds, Leah decided to see what was happening. Turning the corner, she was stunned to see a stranger persistently bothering a white-haired girl, he had grabbed her by there. He grabbed her by the wrists and she desperately tried to resist, the man held her tightly against him, grabbing her by the shoulders. The blonde girl was starting to lose strength and was gradually giving in, but her face remained stubborn, Leah remembered how, after school, she had found her mother's semi-naked boyfriend at home and then began to bother her, the girl stood frozen as an unpleasant noise buzzed in her ears, shaking her head violently to regain her senses. The lady called out sharply to the stranger and ran towards him, having run, Leah kicked the man in the back with all her strength ordering him to stop what he was doing because the young woman didn't like it at all, however, the stranger was significantly stronger than the girl and easily threw her aside. Having hit the ground hard, the lady tried to regain her senses, she sat there, breathing heavily and feeling sharp pain all over her body. The man turned with a dissatisfied expression and asked who she was, his face showed clear irritation and disapproval. The stranger was about to say some rude words but was taken aback when he saw the girl, he hadn't seen her before and asked who she was, looking at the stranger from beneath her eyebrows and stammering, Leah tried to introduce herself, behind him, she noticed a confused blonde, 
the lady realized she looked incredibly attractive with her long, snow-white hair and plump lips. She stood up carefully, dusted off her white dress, and proudly declared that it didn't matter what her name was, however, the girl was sure of one thing, the lady told him not to speak confidently. The man asked what was troubling her, the lady said that this did not matter it was natural for a person to help someone in danger, the stranger looked at Leah with suspicion and did not respond, he then told Shla, which seemed to be the name of the blonde, that she was free to leave, bowing slightly, she responded that she was obeying, the lady looked at her skeptically, feeling a bad premonition, the blonde slowly turned, preparing to leave. Leah felt a sudden panic and realized that she shouldn't have interfered in this matter, not knowing what to do, the lady apologized and decided it would be better to just leave, however, the man told her to stop in a rude tone, he said that the girl had ruined his mood by bothering them, placing his hands on his hips, he asked how she was going to fix it, with a clumsy voice, Leah asked what he was talking about. He explained that, having been away from home for a long time, he wanted to have some fun with his woman, but the lady had prevented it, the stranger said that, in this case, she should take Shla's place, from his words, the girl concluded that they were in a relationship, in any case, they shouldn't have acted like that in public, Leo asked indignantly why she should take Shla's place, she thought she had. She thought she had misunderstood and wanted to leave however, the man didn't let her finish, he grabbed her hand tightly and asked to whom she belonged, the lady was shocked by this question, she replied that she didn't have an owner and politely asked him to let go of the wrist, suddenly, the stranger grabbed Leah and easily threw her onto her back, she didn't even have time to scream in surprise when her feet left the ground, the girl thought this guy had gone crazy, she didn't understand what he was doing and told him to let her go immediately. The lady's attempts to escape were unsuccessful she noticed that the man was devilishly strong. Then, just as quickly, he lowered her to the ground, holding her by the waist. At that moment, Leah felt as if she was starting to fall and couldn't contain her scream. The boy looked her directly in the eyes and told her he liked her very much. His gaze was full of sincerity. The girl noted with disgust that she really wanted to kill him. A very familiar voice came from behind. Lord Carrion sternly told Aram to stop being foolish, turning around, Aram smiled at his brother and noted that it had been a long time since they'd seen each other, Leah couldn't hide her surprise. The regent said that he had heard about Aram's upcoming arrival with the delegation, cautiously, the man replied that he liked to give surprises however, he confirmed that he wasn't joking with this woman, Carrion looked him in the eyes with anger, then, the lady realized that all this time, she hadn't been talking to a commoner, Prince Aram was standing in front of her, Leah remembered very well Uru's recent brief lecture, she said that Aram is the son of the second queen and is now second in line to the throne, he was a strong traditionalist with more support than the young first prince. This explained why the guards didn't do anything despite the scene he had caused, the girl wondered if this meant there was rivalry between him and Carrion. The regent turned to his brother and told him that his behavior was simply intolerable, he then pointed to Leo and added that she was a woman of his harem, the man with the diadem just looked at her in surprise, Aram turned to the Almighty and then asked his brother for forgiveness, the lady said that she had no master and therefore didn't consider herself to belong to anyone. Leo observed what was happening with confusion, her gaze slid over the faces of those gathered until it rested on Carrion. She noticed that his face was distorted with anger, the girl didn't understand why he was mad at her because she hadn't done anything, her thoughts were confused, trying to find the answer to the question, the regent addressed his brother, asking him to be understanding, the mistress was a foreigner and hadn't yet adapted to the culture of his harem, moreover, he didn't believe that the prince had acted deliberately. Aram looked at him with a slightly furrowed brow, noting that it had been a long time since they'd seen each other, but now he had to leave, the man felt tired, probably due to the time difference, the prince approached him with a slight smile on his face and said that they would see each other at the reception, there was reservation in his gaze, and his voice emphasized the tension between them, Leah. Leah silently observed their dialogue, 
smiling awkwardly as she felt her nervousness increasing. If she stayed here any longer, Carrion would probably start scolding her. Just as she turned to leave, a stern voice immediately told her to stop, then ordered her to come closer. The lady returned and, with a guilty voice, asked why the regent was displeased she hadn't done anything wrong. The man asked where Leah got the idea that he was displeased, she replied that in that case, he should forget about it. The girl suggested that the ruler must have had a lot to do, trying to change the subject and wanting to ask what brought Carrion here. However, he didn't let her finish and asked why she had told Aram that she didn't have an owner. Changing her tone, Leah responded furiously that she didn't have an owner. The man calmly replied that according to her contract, he was her master and lord. The lady gave him a fierce look. Carrion stated that if she didn't like these conditions, she could leave everything and go right now. He added that he would easily break the contract and annul it. Embarrassed, the girl apologized, saying that it was a mistake and that she had spoken out of turn. The regent asked what Leah had said, and suddenly she repeated her apologies out loud, bowing her head. The ruler looked at the lady with approval. He ordered her to stay alert and to be careful with Aram from now on. Carrion then looked down and said there was one thing he didn't understand. The girl asked in surprise what he was talking about. With a serious expression on his face, the regent asked if Leah claimed that she was sick, without allowing her to respond. The man asked why she didn't faint in front of Prince Aram. The lady looked him in the eyes, bewildered, not knowing what to say. The ruler asked her again if she had chosen the person before whom she would faint, then Carrion noted with disgust how convenient Leah's illness was, after these words, he quickly turned and walked away. She simply stared at him in confusion, several thoughts raced through her head, and the girl felt ashamed, after dismissing them, she decided that the regent was simply not happy, the girl also noticed how strangely he expressed his thoughts, generally, she had attacks when the situation was tense, but now she felt fine, the lady couldn't understand what was different this time, Leah's head began to pound with her endless thoughts, so she decided to leave it for later, she also wondered why Carrion came to the gardener he probably wanted to tell her something. Walking through the tangled garden, the prince went directly to the designated meeting place, around him were only green bushes and the modest flower beds, Finally, he approached the meeting point and saw a familiar face. The men greeted each other. Aram said that he had heard about Fair's return and asked if he was now Kian's personal security guard. The man responded affirmatively. The prince pointed out that he had recently met with Carrion and added that he wasn't like the rumors described, getting as close as possible to Fair's. Aram whispered that this time, he would have to try to protect the ruler. The prince chuckled and said, Yes. Of course, he wanted to prevent a repeat of the tragedy that occurred in the royal family made Fares grit his teeth in irritation, Airy happily announced to the lady that all the preparations were complete, then courteously asked her to come with her, Carrion proposed several conditions to the girl, one of which was that her appearance must match her status after all, she was the only woman he had chosen, Leah believed that under no circumstances could she become extraordinary especially compared to the beauties of Lauren, who would have believed that out of all the luxurious women, the regent chose her. The maid carefully gathered the lady's long hair into a ponytail and asked if she really intended to form relationships with other women. Leah responded affirmatively. Eru cheerfully asked why the girl had suddenly decided to change her attitude. She thought about it, trying to find the words, then explained that it was important to seize the opportunity while it lasted. After all, they all lived here together, Leo asked the maid if it would be better for them to improve their relationships they couldn't just fight all the time, however, the girl needed to integrate into society only to gather information, she could only leave this place after finding and catching the criminal. Looking at the lady, Er responded that it was the right decision, the owner of the harem didn't like it when the women were jealous of each other in the case of severe conflict. She even punished them. These words surprised Leah. She couldn't believe they would be envious of her because of Regent Carrion. Then she laughed, unable to bear the absurdity of the situation. Fully prepared, the lady quickly walked toward the exit. 
her beautiful hair flowing behind her like waves, shining under the sun's rays, the maid looked at Leah with concern it was quite obvious that she wasn't going there with the intention of making friends. Fares was in the regent's chambers beside him, his impartial gaze directed at the void, Prince Aram's threatening words swirled in his head, and he sincerely didn't know what to do, Carrion was saying something to him and then asked a question that required response, but Fares ignored all the words, finally, the ruler addressed Fares by his name as if checking if he was alive, the man grimaced and returned to reality, quickly apologizing to him, he then realized that the regent was talking about Lady Leah. Fares reported that according to her maid, from that day onward, she would attend social events, this statement surprised Carrion he couldn't imagine what the girl would do there, given her personality, he could only hope that she wouldn't become a source of problems, the guard sighed deeply, Fares suggested sending someone to secretly watch over Lady Leah if the ruler was so worried, he looked at him with slight doubt in his eyes, waiting for a reaction. The regent immediately rejected this idea, stating that it wasn't necessary, closing the book, the man added that the few people who knew, the better. Besides, the girl herself had decided to work for them, and she was very aware of the possible risks, Carrion assumed that everything would be revealed as soon as someone approached her, the ruler gazed thoughtfully out the windows, believing that his feeling of anxiety was nothing more than regret for wasting time. Leah stood there, devastated, with her head bowed in defeat. Her mission today was a complete failure all the women treated her as if she didn't exist at all, moreover, they constantly gave her sideways glances, the lady supposed that they simply. She felt fear every time she approached them the girls quickly turned around and walked away, their behavior infuriated Leah, she didn't understand what she had done wrong to deserve such treatment. Having abandoned this idea, she wondered which of the girls might be the murderer, Without waiting for the event to end, the lady decided to withdraw, walking slowly through the long arched hallway, she sighed deeply and looked at the floor, the girl noted sadly that conducting an investigation was not an easy job, she expected it to be difficult, but she wasn't prepared for this. Her train of thought was suddenly interrupted by a strange sensation, Leah felt someone's gaze fixed on her, watching her every move. She guessed that it might be the man from the secret passage, the lady promised herself that this time she wouldn't let him escape, the girl quickly ran toward one of the columns, and what she saw made her scream in astonishment, behind the arch sat a woman crying, who also screamed in fear, stammering involuntarily, she asked what Leah wanted from her, nervously, the lady asked if she hadn't been following her, holding back tears, the girl replied that she was just hiding. She added that she really wanted to cry because she felt homesick. Leah sincerely apologized for scaring her, in turn, the woman reassured the lady, saying that everything was fine and that she was already leaving, the girl watched as the crying woman slowly walked away, she was absolutely sure that she had seen her here for the first time, Leah turned around and got lost in her thoughts, feeling an uncomfortable sensation that she had missed something important. The girl couldn't understand what it might be exactly, suddenly, the lady remembered that she should have hurried she guessed that Regent Carrion was probably already waiting for her in his chambers. As soon as Leah left, a blonde man appeared behind another column, it turned out to be Prince Caesar, who had been secretly watching her all this time, the man, dressed in black pants and a wrinkled white shirt, moved as quietly as possible, he followed the crying girl who walked ahead without suspecting anything, the sun was almost at its zenith, and the clouds covered only a small part of the sky, which made the air warm up more with each passing hour, footsteps approached the stranger, making it seem as if she was fleeing from a pursuit, the young man's amber eyes watched the hunched back of the girl, who wore tattered clothes, as if she was trying not to attract attention, the prisoner turned around, but her pursuer managed to hide behind a column, she sighed in relief and continued. The blonde took note that the girl was heading towards Aram's harem, this surprised him because it was unlikely that she was an assassin otherwise, this assassin was too careless. In her chambers, Leah prepared to meet Regent Carrion, these meetings always made her knees tremble and her palms cover in cold sweat, after standing at the door and gathering her courage, 
The girl timidly knocked twice on the reception door, from the office, permission to enter was heard, the door opened, and the young woman entered to meet her enemy, her thoughts revolved solely around the fact that she needed to spend time with Carrie and otherwise, there would only be more suspicion towards the new person, without deigning to look at his pupil, the prince asked her to sit down they needed to discuss the details of the last report. The girl looked at his correct profile, his smooth shoulders, and his graceful fingers with which he traced the lines of the documents, a shadow appeared on the lady's face, born out of boredom, she thought it would be worth having a book to pass the time while waiting, the question about the regent's long hair arose before the girl even realized what she had said, the prince's hand froze, surprised by such a ridiculous question, to avoid hearing more futile attempts at small talk, he suggested that his chosen one take a nap, however, the questions didn't stop, Carrion slammed the folder shut and fixed his gaze on the girl, the answer that it was none of her business should have reassured the nosy girl. Their eyes met in an imaginary duel, the girl's large grey eyes were filled with fear and anger, while the prince's sharp blue eyes radiated interest in the unusual person from his harem, due to the tension between them, the young beauty became embarrassed and asked the knight for forgiveness for her behavior, while the future king began to doubt the innocence of her questions, perhaps she was seeking more personal information about him, the girl jumped from one tropic to another, asking about the dungeon with beetles, the same one used to scare newly chosen ladies in the harem, at this, the regent smiled, and just as he began to talk about this terrible conclusion, Leah covered her face with her palms and asked him to stop, this surprised him and made him laugh at the same time. After this dialogue, the girl didn't want to ask Carrion anything else, while the young man was busy with the documents, his subject fell asleep, his gaze focused on such an innocent and charming creature, it was getting dark the stars were already shining in the blue sky, and warm lights were lit in the castle's windows, the regent Kian approached. The girl was asleep and was about to raise her hand to her silky hair but was paralyzed by indecision, spending too much time with her could become a problem for him in the future, in the morning, Leah didn't remember what happened during the night, she asked her maid, Eru, about it, after pausing her cleaning of the window sill for a moment, the maid turned around, she responded that Jackham had carried the young lady to her chambers, this puzzled the lady a bit she definitely didn't remember that name, and perhaps the reason for this was that her brain hadn't yet had time to work actively after sleeping, the servant clarified that this was the name of the girl's guard, the one who was stationed at the door of her chambers. When the maid asked if the lady was going to visit the regent, Leah replied affirmatively, Eru's thoughts were troubled by her mistress's intentions, all the girls of the harem made this mistake, the girl's strategy was to attract the attention of one of the girls, and just as the girl turned the corner in the hallway, a collision occurred, once again, they ran into that lady in a simple dress, the young girl helped the stranger to her feet and apologized, hoping she hadn't offended the woman, to which she only responded that it was her own fault as she was walking too fast, lost in her thoughts. Leah's eyes widened and she asked what her companion had been thinking about that she didn't notice what was happening around her, the lady responded tearfully that she had been separated from her parents for three years, indeed, it must be painful not to see your loved ones day by day, the girls sat on a bench in the hallway and continued their conversation without looking each other in the eyes, the woman told the young girl that the harem had previously belonged to the first prince, after his death, the possessions passed to Carrion. The newcomer was surprised to hear that the first prince didn't like women it turned out he kept a harem as a tradition of the royal family, a plan formed in Leah's mind, since the stranger had lived here for three years, it was possible to learn much from her, she decided to act now and suggested they have a cup of tea together in the prince's reception room, the girl was already seated with a book, but instead of reading it, she was watching the night, today, he appeared especially unkind. Suddenly, the regent showed interest in the investigation, the girl's fingers tightened around the book cover without responding anything intelligible, his majesty interrupted his speech, looking at his subjects, and smiled, 
he once again suggested abandoning the foolish idea and accepting life in the harem, after all, it wasn't as terrible as the newcomer imagined. Leah slammed the book shut and opposed Carrion, reasoning that if he inherited the harem from his deceased brother, perhaps he was a murderer, this surprised the regent it was difficult for him to guess that his lady would suspect her master of murder, the lamps were burning brightly in the room, illuminating the walls with a warm glow, there was tension between the two young people, the regent looked at the girl sternly, irritated that a simple girl would accuse her master of murder not just any murder, but the murder of his brother. Leah cleverly steered away from the delicate topic, crafting her words into a simple version that anyone could accept, the girl got up heavily from the sofa and complained of discomfort, this was a plan to escape perhaps the prince would pity her and let her go, Carrion himself rose from his seat, his eyes sparking with anger, and ordered his subject to sit down, the young man removed his cloak, which was the color of a ripe plum, in response to the girl's surprised exclamation, the regent only reminded her that she was the girl from Saren, Leah jumped up and tried to escape, attempting to protect herself by not giving in to her personal feelings, however, her master anticipated her because his desire was purely physical, the young girl leaned forward and began to choke, which genuinely frightened the young man, he felt that, the convulsions had stopped, and his beloved fell unconscious right in front of the sofa, the prince rushed over and checked her breathing, the girl wasn't breathing, despite the significant difference in their status, Carrion began performing CPR, unable to handle the situation, he called out for fares in a panic, dark clouds were gathering over the castle, and the weather was worsening. Two men were walking down one of the long hallways, Fares was irritated that the knight's fiancée tilde copyright he had lost consciousness right in front of him, however, the prince admitted that he himself had caused the worsening of his subject's illness, the regent allowed himself a laugh this girl, Leah, really got on his nerves, the bodyguard correctly noted that this could become a weakness for the future ruler, it would be easier to let the girl go home. A nurse emerged from the hospital room, the young man held back and immediately asked how his new girl was feeling, the girl in the white robe said that the newcomer's problem was psychological, the knight was surprised by Thesa was his chosen one suffering from a mental disorder, this was bad news for him. Behind the clouds, a fuchsia sunset was visible, in the quarters of the regent's second brother was his favorite, despite the shoulder massage from the hands of his passion, tension was evident on his face, the king's son was unhappy that his older brother had taken control of the government so quickly, the blonde continued to reassure her lover that the nobles were certainly on his side, she returned just in time to avoid any rumors, the man looked back at Schler he needed a family dinner that included both Carrion and his fiancé Tilda copyright he. Mornings at the castle were always accompanied by a beautiful sunrise, with pink clouds and a blue sky, but the regent Ian's morning began with negotiations over the region's budget, the prince was asked to review a law written by his younger brother, this enraged him, just because these people had been able to persuade his brother through threats didn't mean they would get along with him, however, the previous regent had died, and the agreement hadn't been signed, the final word belonged to the current ruler. After the failed meeting, the merchant left with nothing, the regent Carrion was intelligent and knew how to assert his power, and it was useless to argue with him, the young man was in a foul mood, but the thoughts about Leah's diagnosis, the new girl from Saren, wouldn't leave him in peace, indeed, they had told him what he denied in every possible way that it was the regent Carrion himself who was the cause of the girl's stress, surprisingly, he was angry with the man who had hurt his lady when she was a child, however, the prince was troubled by these thoughts he shouldn't have thought of his subject in that way. A young woman was walking through the garden, exposing her pale skin to the sun's rays, she, too, was thinking about what had happened that night, recalling all the details, the girl couldn't help but admit that it was also her fault, but all of her anger fell on the kidnappers, because of them, she was on the brink of death and suffered daily in captivity. A charming young man quietly approached from behind, 
The broad-shouldered blonde man caught the lady's eye before she had time to realize who he was. He covered her mouth with his large palm, but two maids were already looking for Prince Caesar in the garden. This was nothing new for them. The young heir often snuck away and spent time out of sight. The man loosened his grip and got distracted by the voices of the maids as they moved away. The captive girl in his hands bit the criminal's palm. He couldn't contain his exclamation, not so much from the pain but from the shock of being retaliated against by such a fragile lady. Leah laughed, she apologized for her actions, explaining that she simply thought he was another pervert who had trapped her among the bushes. Immediately, the girl calmed down when she recognized the younger prince in the young man. She was already afraid of punishment for causing harm to the royal family, but the young man himself admitted his guilt. As punishment, he only invited the new girl to a party in honor of the royal son's arrival. The lady didn't like this she refused to go with the prince to the celebration and told him so directly to his face. This surprised Caesar, after all, all the girls dreamed of receiving his invitation. He suspected it was because she was Carrion's woman, which confirmed the rumors, the girl knew nothing about their culture, she was shocked by the prince's words. Not understanding the risk she might be taking for Carrion, to Caesar, it seemed obvious, but he had to explain that the lady could become a liability for the current regent, the girl laughed, believing that a master couldn't commit suicide over a subordinate, she shook her head and briefly replied that she would never believe that, this angered the young man, but he decided to change the topic of conversation. Hat brothers could exchange women among themselves according to their status. The young prince told the girl about Shla, who was once the first in the harem of the deceased prince and is now nicknamed Drama Woman. Their conversation had become more amicable when the echoes of the maid's voices were heard again around the corner as they continued searching for Caesar. Finally, the boy warned Leah to be careful with that blonde woman, she had her own power and her own plans for life in this harem. Most of the maids and the head maid who led them had gathered in the hallway when Fares entered the room, he was interested in talking to her about Miss Leah, the sun was shining in the courtyard, and it had just reached its zenith, but while sipping tea, the lady was only interested in Carrion, wondering why he avoided the topic. The same stranger entered the room, interested in the young woman's health, to which Leah smiled and thanked her. The lady looked around the girl's room and noted that it was special, different from the others. After accepting tea from the hostess, the lady said that the queen didn't like the harem, and moreover, the late ruler was a reformist. This was the only reason why so many conflicts and disputes were associated with the elders, but when the girl asked why both the queen and her son had died at such a young age, the woman left and exited the chamber. Immediately, the maid Ira entered with an invitation, she notified Leah that Lady Schler wanted to see her, surprise was visible on the lady's face why were new guests coming to see her? Miss Schler smiled and reminded the girl that she was invited to a family celebration in honor of the prince's arrival. The girl was thinking about the beautiful blonde, Schler, who was the first to appear in the harem, most likely, she had difficulties here. But Leah shook her head and decided to stop thinking about it, she still didn't understand. The first lady leaned toward the young girl, she was right Regent Kian hadn't said anything about the invitation, my lady frowned this wasn't the first time she had seen this lady, who was neither arrogant nor malicious, she was already looking around the room and even offered to help decorate it, but the owner of the room refused the help, saying she was happy with everything, however, she herself suspected that something was wrong here, Shla smiled softly, after all, this girl was the unofficial wife of the regent, surely she shouldn't have changed anything in the castle, Leah didn't like that tone directed at her, she felt the blonde was mocking her and remembered how Prince Caesar had warned her about Shla. The first lady laughed, pretending to hope she hadn't offended the girl with her words. The young girl was no longer laughing hatred for the beauty grew in her mind, however, when the girl refused to attend the party, the woman frowned, if she really didn't go, the royal family would have to punish her, Schliss smiled again and offered her clothes in case the girl didn't have anything to wear, Leah thought it was better to let them openly hate her, like they hated Kamla, 
But this female drama was very bad and clearly had some ulterior motive. A little later, O arrived, the girl immediately asked a bachelor, the maid had been there for a long time and should have known everything about everyone, the maid said that the blonde was indeed the first in the late prince's harem and also became the third wife of Prince Drum, but she also managed to realize that she was the prince's favorite, Lady Leah should have been more careful this was the second warning of all time, it was getting dark a scarlet sunset covered the sky and met the rising moon, a woman was following Shla the two were planning something and preparing for something, Prince Carrion was sitting by the window, looking at the dark blue night sky, Fares's question took him by surprise, was the regent avoiding his new subject, to which he replied that he was only concerned with her health, the bodyguard asked another question he was interested in why his master had threatened the doctor with his subordinate, but this question went unanswered. As the investigation progressed, the first servant discovered that the harem's administrator was planning something and hiding it from everyone. The morning in the castle began in an empty hallway where the head maid was waiting for Prince Caesar. She told the young man about Fares's investigation. The woman gave the young prince some advice to stay away from the troublesome. The lady wanted to protect the boy from the problems associated with the new girl, but he rejected her. He revealed a secret that no one else knew. Caesar himself had kidnapped the young Leah, this news gave the lady a headache, and she regretted not being able to scold the prince as she did in his childhood, however, she earnestly asked the lady not to tell this news to his father, they agreed on this while playing chess. The king and the prime minister discussed the transfer of the throne, this could only be achieved by finding a woman for Prince Kian, he was thinking of a lady who had somehow ended up in the harem but for the first time in a long while, the regent was interested in a woman. Lady Leah was preparing for a reception in honor of the royal son's arrival, she was annoyed that she was supposed to please the regent, especially since they hadn't seen each other for several days, before leaving, Aeru called out to the girl and urged her to be careful at the party, the guests were only aristocrats and members of the royal family there was no room for mistakes. Upon arriving at the event, my lady didn't see her companion Carrion, nor did she see Shla, the latter made her exhale with relief, the girl was startled by a sudden question from behind she didn't see the man's face, but he was curious about what the young woman was doing in that dark corner, it was Prince Carrion who startled the young girl, she began denying that she was hiding, after all, she simply didn't want to go to the center of the hall herself, before she could object, the regent noticed how charming she looked today, but then remembered the psychiatrist's recommendations, he shouldn't show interest in this girl. My lady waved her hand in front of the young man's eyes and apologized for the gesture, but he himself was deep in thought, the regent suddenly turned and ordered his subject to follow him, however, the girl grabbed his hand and stopped him she really needed to know what was happening and what was going on between them but she only said that she was afraid of ruining the royal family's evening and admitted that she wouldn't like to be executed for her mistake, Carrion reassured Leah that she didn't need to worry, after all, as long as she was with him, no one could do anything to harm the prince's woman. The lady looked at the young man in surprise there had definitely been some changes in him, but for now, she couldn't understand the reason for it. The couple was already waiting at the table when the Prime Minister was the first to approach the Prince and his companion, he offered to introduce the Regent to all his relatives. Leah sat at the table, feeling uncomfortable being alone among a crowd of strangers, she had a bad feeling, a man approached from behind again, and the girl was startled by a voice asking why the lady was sitting alone at the table, the words of response came out on their own. The matter of Prince Drum's wives hung in the air, however, he turned to the young woman with a smile and asked the new girl to become his fourth wife, after all, according to him, Carrion wouldn't last long. These words frightened Leah she was taken aback by the prince's unexpected proposal, people started to look at them, and new gossip spread throughout the castle in a matter of hours, swallowing the lump in her throat, the girl dared to ask what. Leah asked what Drum meant when he said that Carrion wouldn't last long, the boy explained to the lady that, according to him, the king was recovering, which could mean that Prince Carrion would soon leave his position, 
he touched the young beauty's hair, and Leah immediately slapped the master's hand away, she was instantly afraid, realizing she had just struck a member of the royal family, laughing nervously, she apologized, explaining her action by saying she thought she had something stuck in her hair. The man's demeanor instantly became more serious, and there was a threat in his words, he spoke openly about being stronger than Carrion, whispering in her ear that he could prove it right then and there, the girl quickly realized what the newly arrived prince wanted from her, smiling, she tried to step away, but Drum grabbed her slender wrist, saying that the regent wouldn't care at all if his bride pleased the prince, he grabbed the girl by the shoulders, rudely repeating his demand, and threatened her with imprisonment. This frightened Leah, and she recalled terrible stories about him, just then, Caesar came to the rescue, turning to his brother, it seemed Schler was urgently looking for him, leaving Leah, he turned and went to find his wife, the young prince immediately advised them to leave the room, warning that once Drum realized he had been lied to, he would be very angry. They ran to the garden, breathless, Leo asked the boy what would happen to them now that they had fled, the young man promised that everything would be fine and said that if it wasn't him, Schler would already know what to do, the girl was embarrassed and told Prince Caesar that Drum wanted to marry her as his fourth wife, the young prince smiled now he understood why Schler had been so irritated lately, he said he even sympathized with her. A voice came from behind the bushes they were looking for Leah, the girl was scared, knowing that this couldn't bring anything good, but there was nothing to fear it was just Carrion who was looking for her, he didn't understand what had happened and why she had left the event without his permission, the girl didn't have time to say a word to the regent before he turned to another boy he hadn't yet met, Prince Caesar introduced himself to the new ruler. The young man took control of the situation and explained to the master that their escape was related to Prince Drum, Carrion realized that the two had known each other for a long time, fluffy white clouds floated in the sky, as always, the day was in full swing. The sun shone in the courtyard, and the birds sang, only the regent and his subject remained in the garden, Carrion asked the girl to tell him what had happened during the event. Leah hesitantly looked at her master and timidly explained that Prince Drum wanted her as his fourth wife, she added that if it hadn't been for young Caesar, that if it hadn't been for young Caesar, Drum would have imprisoned her for disobedience, this situation infuriated Leah she saw herself as a victim, but Carrion was only concerned with what his subordinate had done, he left for a few minutes, and they were about to send his wife to the dungeon, the regent apologized saying he couldn't fully understand Leah's situation and didn't want to blame her for leaving the girl alone without considering the consequences, Lady Leah asked if they had to return to the banquet, but the man said they didn't need to return since he had already met all the family members. Just as the young woman was about to head to her chambers, she was stopped by Carrion's hand, he asked her to walk with him, the two of them strolled through the garden. The prince admitted that it had been a long time since he had walked here and shared some news with Leah, the knight had finished his administrative duties and could spend more time with her. The surprise appeared on the beautiful girl's face, the boy smiled, naturally referring to their contractual relationship, Leah's heart sank with disappointment, she tried hard to hide her feelings of disappointment she hated this man. A few days ago, Leah didn't understand why her feelings had changed so dramatically, now, she no longer felt the tension between them, it was as if Carrion was treating her as a problematic employee rather than a partner, the prince warned her that Drum was cruel and did not like to leave things unfinished, so a man like him might do anything to make sure she became his fourth wife, Leah was surprised and struggled to understand what it meant for Prince Drum to be willing to do anything. The regent explained that it was likely Drum would try to kill him to secure Leah for himself, Leah was astonished and found it hard to believe that someone would commit murder for her sake, Carrion laughed at this, surprised by the cruel opinion he had of himself, their conversation shifted back to the agreement, he still had the power because he needed to find the killer before it was too late to prevent anything irreparable, the young lady was afraid that her master could die so easily and wanted to keep him safe. Her mind raced to come up with a plan, the regent told her that if he died, according to their agreement, she would gain her freedom, 
but he warned that this didn't mean she could try to kill him. This enraged Leah she had never imagined anything like this until recently and was very afraid of Carrion. He advised her to run to Fez in case of danger he would help her escape. Night fell, and the stars illuminated the castle courtyard, Aerie left Leah in her chambers, Leah's heart ached, and her thoughts were consumed by the man, causing her heartache to grow with each beat, suddenly, the doors clicked open, Leah turned and saw a strange woman in the hallway, which seemed odd for such a late visit. The young woman wanted to ask how the stranger had passed the guard but was interrupted by the woman's confession. She was a fundamentalist and intended to execute Leah for profaning her faith and traditions. Fares entered the prince's chambers. The bodyguard noticed something had happened at the banquet and, always perceptive, Carrion nodded, revealing his fatigue from being regent. It was particularly uncomfortable for the young man to be near Lady Leah. He struggled to contain his emotions in her presence and felt ashamed for having left her alone during the event, he had not even apologized for that day, but he did not want to reveal everything, the heir to the king gave an order to guard chief to be free in the ladies' quarters, the lamps shone with a warm light as a woman leaned over Leah, clutching the fragile girl's neck. The intruder's silent presence prevented anyone from hearing Leah's stifled gasps or her attempts to scream. With her mind already clouded, Leah realized she couldn't fend off her attacker, the girl lost consciousness, her last word being carrion, the woman then removed a wig and donned an outfit from Leah's wardrobe meant for the prince's reception. The regent couldn't sleep, preoccupied with thoughts of his beautiful arena woman in her charming reception outfit, suddenly, something clicked, behind him, his new girl stood in the doorway, wearing a revealing outfit. The young man was surprised to see her in his room at that moment, doubts began to invade his mind this wasn't early, the woman suddenly raised her hand and slashed Carrion's chest with a blade, leaving a deep cut on his snow white skin with a red streak, the last thing he remembered was shouting, die. The starry sky illuminated the beige walls of the castle, in a dimly lit room, the prince pressed his wound, finding it impossible that the girl had caused him harm. His attacker's eyes were filled with aggression, he tried to avoid the dagger, raising his hand to deliver a decisive blow, this time, the girl wouldn't escape. Fares burst into the master's quarters, arriving just in time, the bodyguard was shocked by the scene, Leah was standing before the injured carrion, holding a knife, the prince ordered the woman to be captured, and a chase ensued through the long, dark corridors of the castle, as they rounded a corner. The woman's veil fell off. The doctor bandaged the young man's cut, noting how dangerous it was to let the bodyguards go. He asked if the prince had seen the face of the alleged attacker. The regent recalled a conversation with Leah from a few days ago and was deeply interested in what would happen if he died. At the same time, Carrion couldn't believe that this girl was capable of murder. Leah regained consciousness, trying to catch her breath after the long chase. She turned her head in the direction Carilla had fled, the door behind her opened, and Fares entered the bedroom, he didn't expect to find Lady Leah in this state, the servant was certain he had seen her when he ran toward Kian, the young woman asked what the royal guards were doing in the room, they explained that they were there on the regent's orders, Lady Leah lifted the blanket and was shocked to find a blood-stained dagger on her bed, the prince's bodyguard collected the weapon accusing the new girl of attempting to kill the current prince, Carilla entered the room. Was surprised by the swift reaction from her victim, before she had a chance to exhale, they covered the girl's mouth with a hand, and her vision darkened. The events of that night continued in the hospital room where the prince's wound was being treated. The nurse warned Carrion that he would have a scar. Fares entered the regent's quarters, announcing that the king was waiting for him. But the young man was concerned about how his bodyguard had dealt with the culprit, Fares responded that the girl was awaiting interrogation in prison. Leah clung to the cold bars of her cell, mistakenly imprisoned for a crime she did not commit, during the interrogation, the girl was confused and did not recognize the dagger being shown to her repeatedly, she was astonished that the attacker had been dressed exactly like her, even matching the color of her hair, then, Leah realized that the woman was trying to frame her, given that Carrion had forgiven her, 
she suspected that he might be planning to incriminate her. Fares reported that the regent's wound was not fatal the prince was already feeling better, Leah requested to see her master, but she was understandably denied, as dawn broke, the sky turned pink while the stars lingered, reluctant to disappear, the girl was losing hope, accused without understanding the situation, a stranger dragged Carilla to the dungeon, the young and curious prince C.A. Tilda copyright Sarah observed this from around the corner. Nothing escaped his hawk-like eyes. A royal servant approached Fares, who had never figured out why he lost consciousness. The bodyguards concluded that the guard had been drugged, no trace of another person was found, and while no one could believe that Leah was responsible, the evidence pointed otherwise, the man wanted to visit the girl in person. The day was in full swing, and the latest developments with the regent and his new pupil spread quickly throughout the castle. Leah remained in prison, still in the clothes she had woken up in, and it was cold there, the icy air came from the walls, floor, and ceiling, the keys jingled outside the prison cell door, and when it opened, a ray of freedom entered the dark room, Fares approached her, interested in the details of the incident, Leah recounted everything from that night about the fundamentalists and the strangulation attempt. She could only say that the woman had been in R.A. Tilda copyright hen for three years and was a prominent figure there. In the well-appointed quarters, porcelain dishes with tea and sweets clinked as laughter filled the room, Schler sat at the head of the table, hoping that the ruler was not an unknown girl but a member of a noble family, the king and his heir were seated at the table, discussing the most pressing issue of the moment, the ruler requested that the prince execute his subject. However, the prince remained resolute. All the power was in his hands to some extent, he was stronger than the king, and his conclusion was final, no one dared to touch Lady Leah, Fares was in the regent's quarters, where it seemed more important for him to discover who had attempted to kill the prince, the young man needed to know if the culprit was indeed his lady. The bodyguard recounted the prisoner's words about the strangulation and the planned plot to frame Leah. Their conversation lasted into the night, and by then, lamps had to be lit. Carrion touched his recent wound and asked his chief advisor if he believed Lady Leah's story. Surprisingly, the advisor remained completely calm and responded, leaving behind the contradiction in his opinion. The lady, who had been observing everything the whole time, could not lie about something like this, suggesting that she was probably not directly involved in the incident. However, there was one more crucial point. According to the description, the guilty woman had never been part of our 8 tilde copyright 10, but the regent desperately didn't want to believe that his lady was playing games, the prince called himself a fool, recalling how his mother had always told him never to trust anyone from the palace, he had disobeyed and was now suffering because of it. The bodyguard intervened in the prince's silent thoughts stating that it was now necessary to decide what to do with the culprit, the prince responded that he would decide for himself what to do, without regard for the law. The girl slept on the cold stone floor, and someone covered her, making her feel better immediately, the gates clicked open, and she didn't understand who it could be, her brain was functioning very slowly after several days without fresh air, Le raised a threatening voice, standing up while still not fully awake. The head maid stood in front of her, calling her to follow, the manager said that the girl would work under her supervision, the lady's voice cut through the silence with a threatening tone, for the first time in R8 tilde copyright 10, the lover became a servant, but the girl was happy about it, they decided not to execute her, and she would be able to live, that it was what mattered. A deep wrinkle appeared on the head maid's face. She didn't understand why the girl who had almost killed the prince was still alive and even out of prison, as the girl walked down the hall, Carrion was lost in his thoughts, the lover followed his orders, which meant this was her punishment, Leah nodded to herself, realizing that the prince could also be wrong, it was no secret that everyone in R8 tilde copyright hen already knew she had wanted to kill the regent, there was no need to argue with them because now the girl was just a servant. The young woman tried again to tell the truth, but the lady refused to listen to her subordinate's excuses, she didn't believe the suspect's words, and anger was boiling in the girl's mind, 
She vowed to herself that as soon as she saw the fundamentalist, she would get what she deserved. Leah was determined to open everyone's eyes. Eru was in the common room for all the maids when she saw her former lover, the maid immediately ran to the meeting, apparently, this girl didn't believe that Lady Leah was guilty, the senior maid gave orders to the young servants, instructing them to teach the new girl all the rules of behavior and the basics of being a maid, the deadline was one day, Eru bowed her head in obedience to her lady's command and called Leah over. They sat on a sofa with soft wool cushions, and the room was decorated in warm shades of yellow and red, the new maid was sitting, looking at the floor, overwhelmed by everything that had happened to her and not understanding why she was going through such trials, the girl asked what she had to do, it turned out there was also a hierarchy among the maids, Leah learned that Uri had been demoted due to the incident with the regent's attempted assassination, the girls then went to inspect the shared dormitory, the bed farthest from the others was left for the new girl, and there was also clothing she was supposed to wear for the rest of her time in R8 tilde copyright 10. After looking around, the new friend whispered to Leah that she believed Leah was not the culprit. The girl was sure that her former lady did not want to kill Prince Carrion, this really encouraged the young woman, as there was still hope she might be acquitted. The only problem was that the culprit had not been found during the day spent in the maid's quarters, Leah realized that the other maids kept their distance from her, convinced that the new girl was the attacker of their master, the bed, compared to the cold stone floor of the dungeon, was incredibly soft and warm, Leah even liked this dormitory more than the luxurious rooms of the women of R8 tilde copyright 10. The next morning, Leah woke up with bruises on her neck. Eru quickly ran to the head maid, frightened by the incident, but these injuries were direct evidence that the lady was not lying, Eru lifted Leah's chin with their fingers, trying to wipe away the bruises, thinking they were pained, the girl's eyes began to tear up, the lady was perplexed and found it unlikely that they were trying to deceive her. Eru continued to plead with the head maid to contact the regent, the evidence of the attack on the girl and her innocence was before their eyes but the senior maid only silenced the girls, this startled the maid, and it was painful for her to realize such a categorical stance, but it was impossible to disobey, the girl left, and now the woman turned to Leah herself, the lady had to decide what to do with the troublesome girl. The lady decided to silence the matter without resuming the investigation, saying that the prince was busy with business and it was pointless to discuss such nonsense. Besides, the bruises would eventually fade, no one was supposed to know about the problems in R8 tilde copyright 10, and even if the new girl wanted to tell something, nobody would care, the high-ranking officials of the castle would not listen to the servants, and she was the lowest of them. Leah lost hope. The only thing she could do was be thankful she wasn't executed, she had to accept it, when she left, the head maid told her to cover her neck and stand in front of the mirror. Leah thought about a new problem due to her injury, she had lost her voice, but she wished that Carrion could see the bruise, he wouldn't leave it like that. Eru was already waiting in the hall, she was pleased that Leah had adapted to her new uniform and hairstyle, Leah was even surprised that her friend could wear any clothes, upon hearing the lady's voice, the maid immediately sat beside her and advised her not to speak until her vocal cords healed, cleaning the floor. The new girl among the servants was furious, the lower class girls were forced to make toys for the men, she was shocked by the impunity of these actions, silently wringing her wet hair. The girl repeated the same words, the most important thing was to remain silent, and everything would be fine, all the maids followed this rule, there was a jolt from behind, and the lady's eyes widened with fear, for a moment, she wondered who was behind her now. Prince Drum and his bodyguard were behind him, the mockery in his voice dripped with poison. The girl was afraid he would find her, recalling Carrion's words that after what he and C.A. Tilda copyright Sai had done, Leah needed to flee from this man, she ran, which only brought a cruel smile to Prince Drum's face, he considered the act very foolish, much like her previous escape, after all, such behavior only made Drum more excited running around the far corner, the girl tried to catch her breath, she didn't want to become an object on which others could do as they pleased. 
The exhaustion and the recent days spent in prison took their toll. The girl's legs could barely support her she didn't even want to think about running anymore. The prince appeared in front of her, and the young woman shouldn't have given up so quickly. The feeling of being in a nightmare didn't leave Leah as she gathered her remaining strength, tinged with animal fear. Drum approached, and Leah began to run, but a crack in the path prevented her from hiding. She stumbled and fell down the stairs, painfully landing on her head on the tiles. Her body was trembling, and the adrenaline in her blood prevented her from calming down or feeling tired. She needed to run more. Then, young Prince C. A. Tilda Copyright Sarah appeared in front of her, always arriving on time, a true guardian angel for Leah. His image was complemented by his blonde hair and amber eyes. In the hospital room, the doctor reported her findings to the prince. Surprisingly, his friend was not injured. The only marks left on the girl's body were bru eyes, so a significant number of bruises. Prince C. A. Tilda Copyright Sir also told Leah she wouldn't have to explain anything to his lover, he would decide everything himself. After the young men left, the nurse concluded that the bruises on the girl's neck were not related to today's events. The young woman was worried and didn't know what to do next. The situation for Leah only worsened. The young man reflected on how it all began. Yes, she was kidnapped, but now, thanks to Leah, he had found the hidden fundamentalists. It was particularly important for him to note one thing, if a girl becomes a problem for his idea, he would get rid of her. Leah tried to deal with her injured body, but when she lifted her hand, it only caused a painful crack, Leah's plan had failed. After a wave of stabbing pain, she stopped trying to do anything, today, the young man watching her smiled and assured his friend that he would speak to the lady, and she would stop following my lady to which the young lady asked what the boy would say about her, his response was simple, as for Aaron, he said he would take the girl to his house to entertain her until she recovered, Leah threw a pillow at him, which infuriated the young lady, all the princes in this castle were thinking of only one thing, and that's why she hated them. The door to the room opened, drawing the prince's attention, he was curious about who might come to them, Leah entered the room wearing a beautiful robe, Everything about the girl seemed perfect and harmonious with her appearance. Prince C. A. Tilda Copyrights R. was curious about one thing, why did the girl continue to fight for her vision? If she accepted the rules, her life would be easier. The young lady frowned, unsure of what the boy meant. Perhaps he wanted something from the girl but didn't want to say it. The prince explained that since Carrion had rejected her, why did my friend not want to become Drum's wife? Why did she choose to remain a maid after hearing that the regent had rejected her? The girl felt uncomfortable, her heart racing and her cheeks flushing with embarrassment. C. A. Tilda Copyright Sar stood up and advised the young lady to stay in these rooms figuratively speaking, to take a vacation until she returned to normal. Leah was alarmed by this young man's kindness to her, it was a mystery why he was always there to help her. He asked for some of her questions to be answered later. Once the lady regained her voice, the girl agreed she had no other choice, rest was vital for her. The boy poured himself a glass of red wine and even offered to be friends from now on. The word friends stuck in her mind it turned out she really needed a friend. The next day, when the young lady woke up, her whole body ached with pain, she seemed to have a fever, from a distance. The girl heard the excited voice of the prince offering her some tea, suddenly, Leah began to cry, sobs escaping from her chest, all the pain from the kidnapping, the life of a woman from Marin, days of imprisonment, and now being a servant came flooding in, she didn't understand why all this was happening to her, Prince C. A. Tilda Copyright Sar left the girl in bed, holding her hand and watching her closely as she calmed down. The young lady felt as if she had an older brother by her side, even though not even her own mother cared for her this way. A few days later, Leah's voice returned, she recovered and was able to get out of bed. The girl asked how old the prince was, he laughed at this the young man was 100% older than her, however, he guessed her real age wrong he assumed she was 19 years old, but she laughed, saying she was older than that, despite looking young. The handsome man leaned towards her, with her voice returned, he could ask her the questions he had mentioned before, 
The first question was what Leah knew about the girl who tried to kill her, anything small that my lady could remember would help, the young lady replied that they didn't talk about anything specific, just general tropics related to the investigation, it was getting dark, she was with Fares in the Regent Carrion's office, today, Fares had planned to focus on work, but after some hesitation, the prince sighed and decided to go to bed, he was tormented by fatigue, lying in his room, where the dim, warm light burned, the man heard footsteps approaching, the girl called him by name, Carrion stood up, his heart racing, Leah stood before him, touching his chest with a soft palm, the man couldn't take his eyes off his lady, the girl lay down beside him, her name sounded so beautiful on her lips, the couple merged in a kiss, both had been waiting for this moment with fear in their hearts, seeming to merge into one, the regent abruptly got out of bed, what a wonderful dream it was, but this new girl's desire frightened the young man, he believed Leah was a liar and thought she was the one who wanted to kill him, but his heart told him that this wasn't the whole truth. It rained all day, dark clouds covered the sky, as if there were ink stains floating above the city that the sky was desperately trying to erase, in his chambers, Carrion was not afraid of the rain, it was warm and cozy there, with a soft yellow light illuminating the room, the doctor came to see him, she gave the prince good news, his wound was healing quickly, and the scar was barely noticeable, their conversation turned to the girl, the one everyone was talking about, the woman wanted to tell the prince something related to her, something hidden under a silk handkerchief, this caught Carrion's attention, what else could happen to this lady, who seemed to have problems following her like a trail, the doctor explained that the girl had bruises on her neck caused by strangulation, this surprised the prince, who asked the doctor to repeat her conclusion, perhaps Leah wasn't lying to her or Fares, the woman started her story from the beginning, recounting everything that had happened in recent days, the rain continued to fall from his window, Prince Dram watched as the drops fell on the leaves, shaking them, his thoughts were occupied with his brother's wife, Carrion, with each meeting, he liked this girl more, Shla lifted her head, irritated, why had her husband not slept with her but thought about someone else, perhaps someone else, but Drom was just happy that his wife was awake, he needed to give her a task, his favorite always did everything perfectly, Leah walked through the common room for the maids there was no one there, that day, everyone was likely working, the door opened behind her, and a strange woman shouted at the girl for being alone in the room, the stranger called the girl to follow her, on a rainy day, the maids were especially busy, the lady's mood immediately worsened, she couldn't believe she was forced to work again, Regent Kian went out to the balcony and called his faithful servant, Fares, the man had an important conversation with him, the prince recounted what drive, Harris had told him, but where was the fundamentalist who implicated Leah? Given the current circumstances, the lady should have been back in Iran by now, after all, she was not guilty of trying to kill the ruler of the country, however, Carrion believed that for the safety of the girl, she should stay away from him, Fares asked the gentleman to listen to what he wanted to say it had to do with the maids and what had happened between them and the gentleman, Thund rumbled, and lightning blinded the castle for a moment. The maid was given new clothes to wear for work without explaining what was happening. The girl was pushed into the room she was supposed to clean, today it was a bathhouse, it seemed there was someone in the bathhouse, but Leah couldn't be sure due to the thick steam in the room, the door was slammed shut behind her, everything seemed like a trap, a voice asked her what she was doing, the tone, the way of communication, made the girl realize who was with her. Prince Drom was sitting in a pool and called the girl. It seemed all of this was planned, his gaze didn't bode well, Leah knew that look from the young man, she wanted to escape the bathhouse, the man talked to her about her duties that day, everything was part of the plan, to take care of the newly arrived prince, the girl paled, she did not want to do this at all, she was ready to return to the dungeon but not to be here now, the prince stood up angry at the maid's disobedience, she was a servant and had to do everything he said, the girl was terrified, this man could kill her, and no one would care, no one thought about the fate of the maids, he promised that no one would come to the girl's aid if she resisted, 
Prince C. A. Tilda copyrights are walked in the rain and the fresh air formed by ozone. The young man thought about what Leah had said about the fundamentalists, they seemed to disappear after the death of the first prince, the boy sighed, regretting not having interrogated that woman before she was killed, now he had to ask his new girlfriend for details. A woman suddenly appeared from around the corner, judging by her clothes, she was a maid, she scared the girl with her presence. The prince frowned, wondering why the maid was so scared and why she was interested in what he was doing there. The girl began to tremble with excitement, it seemed that the secret plan could fail at any moment, the man looked around the hallway, this part of the castle was suspiciously quiet, he was alarmed by the emerging image, Carrion was running up the stairs, and the royal guards were running after him, how could the prince not know such an important detail, he couldn't forgive himself for this, they burst into the service room, but Leah was not there, where was the girl today? She was supposed to stay in the room, C.A. Tilda copyright Sar was behind them, the maid was with him, and she was the one he needed to ask about what was happening, Carrion was furious, his voice sounded like metal splitting into syllables as he asked where Leah was. In the bathhouse, thick steam covered the room, the girl was kneeling, her hands resting on the edge of the pool, blood was. Nothing good would come from this, and so it happened. The prince admitted that this option was the best for Lee, but if he let her go now, it was likely he would never be able to hug the girl again. This surprised the man the regent made such an important decision to govern the state thanks to a woman, Carrion raised his eyebrows in disappointment with his decision, and the boy looked on, thinking it was impossible for the knight to have such thoughts, after all, Fair could only respect him. The prince explained that it was a new opportunity for the country. If the weapon fell into the wrong hands, everything could only get worse, he turned to the bodyguard, who was willing to serve faithfully no matter what, the man bowed to the regent, pledging his loyalty until the end of his life as promised when Carrion saved him from death, however, there was a problem, starting the next day, Prince Drum and his men could act against Carrion, Lady Lee might become an extreme person, the young ruler was angry his subject really enjoyed this misfortune, perhaps he himself wanted to get rid of the source of problems in his castle, but the young ruler was determined to fight for his goal, it was worth it he was not afraid of obstacles. Fares left the chamber and ordered the guards to reinforce the security of the territory, the guards were to keep their eyes on the regent Carrion and Lady Lee, the rain continued to fall, and the prince held a cup in his hands looking out the window, apparently, the weather was not going to improve, he turned to look at the young girl sleeping in his bed, he thought she had done something like this in the past, if the girl was suffering so much now, he sat by her side, he hoped the young lady would trust her man, she had told him about her past life. The morning greeted the residents with clear skies, and the sun peeked through a few clouds, Lee woke up immediately, the memories of yesterday were deafening and irreparable, if Carrion had not arrived in time, the voice of a man came from behind, the boy wanted to discuss a lot, was it really necessary, the regent was in front of her, wearing a white robe, wanting to talk before people gathered around them, the girl examined the regent but was horrified to see that he was wearing nothing but a white robe, Lee lifted the blanket with her hand, not wanting to draw more attention to her body. Carrion sighed and asked the young lady not to worry her clothes had simply gotten wet from the rain, so he had to change her and put on what he had, the young lady was very embarrassed and cried herself to sleep in the prince's arms, the man gave the girl a cup of hot drink, the steam rising from the cup was decorative, Lee's eyes widened this was her favorite tea, but apparently, an unpleasant conversation was looming. Carrion told the girl what awaited her after yesterday. Lady Lee was facing the death penalty for the harm she had caused to the king's son, Twilight trained in the prince's chambers, Drumshla twisted around her husband and tried to find out what happened, the man frowned, the blonde wanted him to punish the girl, the girl looked him in the eyes, although it had been a long time since anyone had pleased her so much, Lee had to be punished, she leaned toward his lips and said almost in a whisper that this was truly an opportunity to overthrow Carrion. 
She had made too many mistakes in pursuing her new girl, everything depended on how important the girl was to the regent, Schle smiled, if Lee was executed, it would be a great loss for the ruler, but Drum opposed her, he did not have enough authority to do this, first, it was necessary to go through a royal trial, the young lady was trembling, she did not want to believe she would be sentenced to death, but Carrion opposed it, the girl wanted to kill the king's son, he and his bodyguard witnessed this, Lee was lost in her thoughts, memories engulfing her, she told the prince the whole truth, Prince Drum tried to grab the fleeing girl, but he slipped and fell, injuring himself, but Carrion continued, saying that even if the girl told the truth, she had to present it before the court, Lee started to become hysterical, she begged to be removed from the country, promising never to tell what happened here, but the regent had only one plan to help her, and he sincerely wanted this, she was interested in what method could protect her from Drum and his people, but first, the regent had to explain to Lee that Drum was second in line to the throne, with much power and influence, this meant Carrion could not do much to protect the girl, in court, the lady could defend herself, but this was the standard procedure, she did not guarantee an acquittal, the prince continued to diminish Lee's hopes, but he was right no one would believe a maid when a member of the royal family was against her, but the regent's plan was a difficult task, Carrion needed to know if his wife could withstand this. Sunlight entered the maid's bedroom, Lee went in, thinking about the master's words, his plan was for Lee to marry him, so no one would touch the queen, the man gave her time to think and offered to stay at the castle until she called him, the girl realized that if she became a member of the royal family, she would not be sentenced to death, but suddenly, the regent proposed marriage, not only for this reason, perhaps he wanted it himself, however, the young lady did not understand why Carrion needed this, Lee was not from a rich family, and marriage would not bring the ruler anything. The ruler called his mentor, wanting to know why she was hiding what was happening among the maidens, the woman lowered her eyes to the ground, but the boy was angry, he did not understand why they were hiding the bruises on the girl's neck, the young man did not approve of concealing details about his wife's life, the master's words did not escape the chief, he did not speak about his women but his wife, he was interested in what the regent was doing but she defended Prince Drum and the maid who helped him. They were only following laws and traditions, so they could not be accused of anything, Carrion knew this, so he wanted to change the customs associated with the servants, whatever it took. Lee and Ayaru carried clean sheets, the friend was worried that the girl had taken too much and could hurt her back, but the maids hurried out, the sun was shining brightly, the clothes would probably dry quickly, the girls hung sheets in the yard. Not a single cloud was in the sky the weather was beautiful, the girl looked at the horizon, in the distance, a port could be seen, Lee was speechless, her thoughts began to swirl in her head, the young woman could have jumped from the building and escaped, it seemed as if freedom had never been so close, a person approached her from behind, he asked the young lady to be careful she might fall from such a height, the girl recognized the men as Carrion's royal guards, it seemed strange to her to have such a careful attitude towards her, Lee had an idea, maybe she misunderstood the prince's proposal, he probably only wanted to extend her contract, the girl laughed with relief, she did not understand how she came up with the idea that the prince wanted to marry her due to his feelings, the lady of the arena was in the king's reception room and had already informed about a possible marriage between the regent and the maiden, this even scared the king, how could his successor marry a simple girl and not an aristocratic woman? Then there was a conversation with the Prime Minister, the men were discussing that Prince Drum would no longer leave this woman alone, these powerful people enjoyed the game of pawns, they were curious about what would happen next. The mistress gathered all the maids in the yard due to a new order from the country's leader, the prince indicated that no one, regardless of their status, could touch the maids for sexual purposes, this caused excited whispers among the girls, this order was contrary to the castle's traditions, Lee entered the room, the maids looked at her and discussed something, Airy burst into the living room before she could say anything, the mistress stopped her, the girl was interested in why everyone was looking at her like that, but her friend replied that everyone was very grateful but afraid to speak about it, 
Nevertheless, the order had to be obeyed, Lee had to gather herbs, she was unhappy about being under the scorching sun all day with a huge basket, the girl looked for a herb garden, footsteps were heard in front of her, the young lady looked closer, an old man was walking along the path ahead, the man nearly fell, but Lee managed to catch him and save him from falling, the girl asked what he wanted, the knight explained that he had dropped his object in the fountain that morning, the lady looked closer at the foot of the fountain were pruning shears, the girl was surprised how an old man could work so hard, the lady turned around, hoping to ask the guards for help, but there was no one around, however, the girl was not lost, she decided to help the man herself, she entered the fountain, already in icy water up to her waist, she turned to the man, asking the girl to be careful, and she submerged deeply, a moment later, she raised her hand in victory, managing to get the shears for the old man, when the girl emerged from the pool, she asked the man why Carrion allowed. Harris brought the head of the country to the center of the hall in the wheelchair, the girl was surprised, then, in the garden, she had not spoken to the gardener, that man turned out to be the ruler himself, the king smiled, Carrion asked about his father's health but suddenly started coughing, they immediately began to take the man to the infirmary, but he turned around and asked to listen, he officially recognized the engagement of the regent and Lady Lear, the couple was promised a wedding at the end of the month, this news caused a deep silence in the courtroom, Prince Drum was completely enraged, he did not understand why the maid who had injured him was allowed to become part of the kingdom, the king also began to get irritated by the young people's behavior, he advised them to resolve their conflict in the traditional way, Leah was lost, what was this method, and why was everyone so afraid of it? The prime minister asked everyone to return to their rooms, for the two participants, the letter was to arrive later, Prince Drum turned around with a smile as he left and told the minister that he would really look forward to that day, Leah frowned, why was the man so happy? What awaited them in the future was a mystery to the girl, before the young woman had time to ask Carrion what he meant, the king called her, it was the minister who wanted to speak privately with the regent, the young lady had to leave, the man asked Leah to wait for him in her old room, the girl was worried about what was happening, Leah walked down the empty hallway, lost in her thoughts, not noticing the men who seemed to be waiting for her, Fares and his assistants volunteered to accompany the young lady to the room, this situation alarmed her even more, the regent and the prime minister discussed their affairs, their conversation quickly returned to Leah, Carrion sighed and closed his eyes, no one could change the fact that she was now his fiancé tilde copyrightee. The young man was not afraid to die for her sake, his goal was to save the life of the new girl, Leah caught up with Fares, who was walking ahead, she wanted to ask a question, confused, she asked anyway, curious about what the traditional method was, Fares turned pale, which meant that the two men had to duel, after these words, no further explanation was needed, the young lady stopped, her ears buzzing, one of the men had to fight until death. Leah let out a nervous laugh, maybe Fares was joking, or the king did not speak of this duel, how would the girl like this, after a while, the young woman asked another question, she was curious about how good Drum was in duels, Fares stopped and replied that Drum was one of the best in the entire kingdom, Leah entered her old room, she did not think she would return here again, the girl thought about how much had changed here. The girl was no longer Carrion's lover but his fiancé tilde copyrightee. Suddenly, sadness overtook the young woman. What would have happened if the prince had died in a duel with Drum? It was even frightening to imagine. Leah was scared that Carrion was more cultured and intelligent than physically prepared for a difficult competition. The girl trembled with fear. The regent was not like Prince Drum. A young man approached from behind. The young lady jumped, startled. She was so lost in her thoughts that she did not hear him come in, the man spoke seriously, worried about what had happened to his lady while he was away, the girl looked at the knight's eyes with suspicion, she asked him if he was really going to fight drum, his gaze immediately became gentle, Leah was worried about him, this understanding filled her chest with a pleasant warmth, the girl looked at Carrion with fear, she asked if he was afraid of dying during the competition, but the boy smiled, 
no one was going to fight to the death it was just a battle to victory, Leah laughed, the regent's words were an incredible relief for her, the young man approached, his fiancé Tilda copyright he had no reason to be afraid, he had the situation under control, that night, I arrived at Lady Leah's quarters, genuinely happy for her friend, the girl thought that probably a lot was being said about her among the women of the arena, but the maid hurried to bother her, if the young lady could become Carrion's wife, then others could become a second or third wife, this brought sadness to the young woman's heart, Leah sat on her soft and spacious bed, suddenly, the door opened slightly, the girl's gaze was immediately drawn to the narrow gap that led to the hallway, but it was only Carrion, he was here for a reason, the young man wanted to maintain an important tradition called the honeymoon, this was a period in which the couple could enjoy their upcoming wedding, the young man sat on the bed, they had to act like a real couple, or Leah could be executed, Leah closed her eyes, they had to pretend to be a real couple, it seemed like the whole world had gone crazy, the girl thought that Carrion did not care, but then she did not understand why he wanted this marriage, the young woman felt her eyes hurt, she needed to go outside for fresh air it might help her sleep, the girl got out of bed and discovered that on the other half of the bed, there were pillows instead of the groom, she frowned, where could the boy have gone, at that moment, the couple had slept, sharing the space between them with pillows, thus avoiding contact, now, after the man had left the bedroom a long time ago, the sheets had already cooled, Leah put on her robe and walked barefoot on the floor, the courtyard was dark, but the important thing was the fresh air, opening the doors, the girl felt much better, the wind blew through her hair, and it was much easier to breathe, her gaze fell on the silhouette at the other end of the balcony, Carrion was standing there, apparently, the young man also could not sleep, Leah clutched the robe, it seemed that she had married the prince, the girl decided to leave, but the young man had already noticed her, he asked if she slept as well as he did, the young man explained that lately he had been suffering from frequent insomnia, before the future queen had time to ponder why she should leave, she wondered why he was having trouble sleeping, Carrion approached, saying he didn't have nightmares but dreams that made his heart race, he leaned in toward Leah, she wanted to pull away, but the young man stopped her movement, someone was watching them, he took the young woman's delicate chin in his fingers, they were not allowed to enter or show signs of having discovered spies, Leah's eyes widened, Carrion leaned in to kiss her but stopped just a millimeter from her lips, then the young man looked into Leah's eyes, it was now possible to return to the room, the man picked up his fiancé Tilda copyright he and carried her to the bedroom, now they definitely needed to go to bed, Carrion suddenly pulled away from her and murmured good night, Leah laughed nervously, not fully understanding what had just happened, she also lay down on her side of the bed, in the morning, Carrion was reading a book while sitting on a red sofa with soft white cushions, after a few pages, he set the book aside with a sigh, Fares was nearby and asked if everything was alright with the regent, who seemed tired, the prince rubbed his temples, explaining that he hadn't slept enough and had been suffering from insomnia for several days, the young man also told the bodyguard that someone was watching him and Leo outside in the darkness, Carrion didn't see who was watching them, it was late, and the young man was tired, he wanted to know if it was Drum's man and if not, who it was and why they were following the young couple, Dr. Harris entered the office, they were discussing what the doctor wanted in return after the trial, the woman suggested checking his health system and purchasing more necessary equipment, Leo woke up around noon unable to sleep until the morning when her fiancé Tilda copyright had already gone to work, this was a problem that couldn't continue for long, the girl had to act, there was only one option, find Carrion's assassin next month, and according to the contract, Leah could be free, Eru's voice brought the young woman out of her thoughts, she had arrived and was ready to serve her mistress, Eru was concerned about the girl's appearance and the bruises under her eyes, but when the maid saw the rumpled sheets and pillows, she felt embarrassed, the maid suggested that the young lady take a warm bath to relax, and for better effect, she could add essential oils, Leah stopped Ayeru before she could prepare the bath and asked who the best swordsman in the country was, the girl was embarrassed, 
The best swordsman was Fares, he always won the king's annual tournaments, this surprised Leah, Carrion's main bodyguard was the best swordsman in the country, however, there was another candidate for this position, Prince C. A. Tilda Copyright Tsar. But Veru assured her that her mistress should never argue with anyone, it was supposed that maids should not spy on the men who trained, not wanting to bathe, the girl quickly left the room, an idea came to her mind, before Leah had time to leave the room, she noticed the security but really needed to see C. A. Tilda Copyright Tsar, the girl left the room freely, smiling, and the servants followed her to her quarters, the young prince sat on the sofa, browsing through a new magazine, something rustled behind him, and he turned round, Prince C. A. Tilda Copyright Tsar was ready to strike the intruder, but it was only the Prime Minister entering the chamber, the young man asked why the minister himself had come to him, but he replied that the king was interested in him, it was interesting to know that neither side was acting naturally, only Drum wanted to kill Carrion in a duel, but the young man didn't understand the king's decision, why did he allow the marriage to take place, it turned out that some people thought the marriage wouldn't happen the king might use it for his own purposes, perhaps Leah's fate was only to prevent the regent from escaping, C. A. Tilda Copyright Tsar simply smiled at this, he felt no pity for the foreigner, but the boy was cunning, he might help find the assassin, but only if the king granted his wish, Leah was walking in the garden, it was as if the guards were glued to her on both sides, there was no way she could enter C. A. Tilda Copyright Tsar's quarters, the girl pretended not to understand why she couldn't go a little further, but the security didn't let her in. Leah was Carrion's fee on K. Tilda Copyright E and wasn't allowed to enter other princes' territories without permission. Discontent, she walked in the other direction, unfortunately, she couldn't see her new friend, Leah was also informed that they would report every step she took to the regent, having learned the names of the men, the girl smiled charmingly and allowed herself to be led back to her quarters, as she passed through the alley, she heard a metallic noise. The bodyguards explained that it was soldiers draining, Leah climbed the stairs and looked through one of the arches, Drum was fighting with one of the royal army soldiers, the girl had to admit that he was formidable, the man wielded his sword and cut through the air with a whistle, his opponent fell, Leah panicked, how could her fiancé Tilda copyright fight Drum, Carrion could have been killed with the first blow, the girl cried, sitting on the floor, first, they would kill the regent, and then her, why was there a plan with marriages? No one would be saved, Schler was nearby, as always, the girl looked elegant, and it was clear from her face that she was proud of her husband. The blonde woman said that for many centuries, the prince had become king through this method, the lady looked at Leah, believing that a strong man should govern the country, and this could only be proven in a duel. The girl stood up, she believed that strength didn't have to be physical, nowadays, Moral core and intelligence were important, Drum's wife laughed, saying that this was true in other countries, but in this state and country, everything remained the same as it had for many centuries, she looked Leah in the eyes, believing that Leah's future husband would win, but the young woman responded that the winner would be the one who won the competition in the end, it was impossible to think about the future, Schler continued bothering the girl with questions asking where Carrion was and why they didn't spend time together, the young lady decided to laugh off the question, smiling, she was happy for the blonde because she had been a wife twice, which was a great experience for the girl, the woman's nostrils flared with anger, she congratulated the newlyweds on their engagement and left, leaving a trail of floral scent behind her, Fares went to the garden in front of the balcony of Carrion and Leah's rooms, in fact, there were footprints behind the bushes, the girl fell onto the silk bed after talking with Schler, she felt even more tired, the regent entered the room with a large stack of books, he still had to work but also intended to spend a lot of time with his future wife, Lady casually mentioned the red room in the conversation, the prince's gaze immediately turned icy, to avoid embarrassment, the girl steered the conversation towards a duel, asking him to win at any cost. Carrion interrupted her by throwing the books onto the table, he needed to work before dinner, in exchange, he invited her to take a nap and would wake her when the food arrived, Leah woke up to the sound of birds chirping, 
The sun was shining brightly through the windows, it was already morning, the girl hadn't expected to sleep so long, but when she turned around, she saw Carrion sleeping on the sofa with a book in his hands. The young woman watched her fiancé tilde copyright for several minutes, deciding that it wasn't comfortable to sleep in this position, she decided to wake him and offer him a bed, but no matter how much the girl called his name, the young man didn't wake up, however, the young lady was afraid to touch him and wake him up, while the regent slept, he could be examined in detail, the fiancé tilde copyright e wondered how old the prince might be, her hand reached out on its own to touch the young man's long hair, his eyes opened immediately, Carrion grabbed the girl by the wrist, this abrupt gesture startled Leah, the man shifted positions with her and hovered over the young woman, they looked into each other's eyes, the young man brought his lips to Leah's slender and pale neck, before she even had time to say anything to justify touching his hair, the boy's palm touched the young woman's thigh, the girl tried to free herself from his strong hands, she slapped the regent's face with her hand, he froze and looked at her, surprised, suddenly, the man realized he was half asleep and wasn't aware of his actions, a shadow immediately covered his face, ashamed, the boy got off Leah and walked to the other side of the room, he sincerely apologized to his fiancé tilde copyright he, after the dream he had, he was unclear with his words, his heart sank with resentment, who could have imagined that the prince would behave like this while sleeping. She wrapped herself in her robe up to her head and touched Carrion for the first time today. Aero entered the room, the maid didn't expect to see the lady in the same clothes she wore the previous night. My lady, she turned to her, I need to ask you something very important. 